Hello, everyone. Oh, perfect timing. <laughs> She's sad that it's D&D &D time. And she can't play. Can you mute it? <laughs> Here, I can mute you, Mama. Uh, oh, no, I, actually, I can't. So you probably can't. Here. Gotcha. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to session 42 of Tales from Toatha. We're bringing you the stories of adventure, danger, loss, and heroic triumph from a land within our imaginations. Bringing you these tales today is, we'll start with Harbakir Tol Middleek. Hello. Uh, lost. What's up? Chance. Hey. Welgwyn Woodbarrel. What's up? Uh, Cora <laughs> is not here yet. Hopefully she'll be popping in at some point soon. Um, and Nerida, <laughs> who's being accosted by a crying child. But that's the way it goes. Uh, thank you for being with us today to share in our tale. Here is what happened last time. With the mire now quieted, after a brutal fight with creatures born from its depths, the party found before them, partly consumed by the swamp, the Serpent's Bite Temple. With the temple door seemingly sealed, Arali told the party that her research, in her research, she found that the priests would open the way to the temple's interior by telling the tale of the great serpent, Pelos. Using clues found within the story, our heroes safely conducted the ritual to open the great stone door, which alerted a nearby group of lizard folk. Though the lizard folk came in greater numbers than before, their formation was too tight, and they were quickly dispatched. Hurrying into the temple, our heroes realized that they were pursued by yet more lizard folk and quickly closed the door behind them, locking them into the temple. Exploring the chamber inside the temple, the party eventually decided to pull a lever by the main altar, which opened hatches in the walls and began spewing out venomous snakes. During the battle, a Raleigh was able to place the key she had won into the mouth of the great serpent overlooking the shrine, causing the fountain of the shrine to begin to sink into the depths below. Eventually, after beating back numerous venomous serpents, everyone was on the fountain descending further into the serpent's bite temple. And that brings us to now. As the fountain comes to rest at the base of this tall stone shaft, a door emerges from below. Alari grits her teeth, perhaps with nervousness or perhaps with glee, and opens the door. Across the threshold is a short hallway leading to a small room with walls of ancient stone. At the opposing wall from the entryway rests a stone shelf bearing an inscription. Atop the shelf is a metal set of scales, perfectly balanced with nothing set upon either side. At the base of the shelf is a pile of humanoid skulls, carefully arranged. At each of the far corners of the room, an urn rests on the ground. No, not like serpent scales, like scales you might weigh things with. Oh, like how many snake scales does this weigh? <laughs> no. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you guys are feeling, but that the, the fun, the fun room full of snakes, it kind of took it out of me. I don't know. I don't know if I can do any other, like, I don't know if I really got it in me to do any other booby traps without taking a break for a few minutes. I don't know yeah, how safe where we are, but I think, well. yeah. You need healing. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 well, I'm just feeling, I'm, I'm feeling in rough shape in general. Oh, some nice. of it's, some of it's the way I'm, uh, my health for sure, but, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling a little tapped out power wise yeah, as well. I think everyone got a little hurt. Um, is anyone uninjured? Uh, I'm a bit hurt as well. Not, not terrible, but I've seen better days right. for sure. 
I'm gonna heal everyone but Korra because I don't remember if Korra got hit uh, with a. <laughs> pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty sure that's who was just talking to you, Thomas. No, or, that was me, that was Arali. 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 Okay. No, his Korra voice is much more Korra. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> everyone heals for four. Ooh, All right. Thank you. Well, actually, you have to roll wisdom to make sure you can cast <laughs> that. Okay. Everyone might not heal for anything, but they do. By the power of Helm. All right, reaching out to Helm, not terribly difficult. Um, still more of a struggle than you know you're used to, but you're getting used to pushing through the veil that seems to be shrouding you from your deity. Well, um, I'd like to take a rest still if it's at all possible. Yeah, I was about to say. Alik, I I appreciate the gesture, but I think it, it I think, I think I'm I'm with Nerida that I think it might just be, it might be best if we just rest here while things seem calm before we move on to any any other potential traps. How um, much were we yelled for, by the way? Sorry. Do you think it's safe here? Four points. Safer than it was upstairs. Yeah. Well, that certainly seems here, true for the moment. I don't think it's going to be safe anywhere in this temple, but we, have, we can do the best we can. If some of us don't need a rest, maybe they could be on watch, but well, I don't recommend we rest for too long. Are we going to take a short one? Are we are we, are we thinking about a short rest? Or are we I just need a short a, rest. A nice nap? I think a short rest would would be ideal short in this situation. Good. Okay, so everyone hunkers down for a short rest. Basically, just sit around, take a breather. Um... You can use hit dice to recover health by rolling them, basically. Arali is going to do that as well. Let's see, she should have 10 hit dice that are, I believe, D6s. You can always spend more. You have nine. Yeah, I'm gonna use so. hit dice myself. Arali's gonna spend seven. Who's messing with Wolf Me? Stop it. <laughs> oh. I couldn't imagine it. Perfect. The temple is fairly still and quiet as you take your short rest. Oh, look at those numbers. A little bit better. That's a full heal. <laughs> Narada, did you want to uh, spend hit dice during your rest as well? No, I'm okay. Okay. That's surprising. Uh, if Cora comes back, she can spend some hit dice as well. Yeah. So you spend about an hour just relaxing in this room. Did anyone want to? You can discuss things, or you know, play cards, or prepare meals, or whatever you want to do. I was just gonna offer to play cards with everyone. Yeah, so I want to play. I'm gonna here, play go I mean, fish with chance. Okay. It's a good time like for a zone of truth, too. don't you think? Alex, uh, <laughs> quit it with that stuff. I'm serious. <laughs> I thought I'm we were just saying it. I thought we were past that. God, need twos. <laughs> well, Raleigh is going to during the short rest just kind of like look around the room, examine the tablet here. <laughs> um. Weird. Have you read this? She gestures towards the tablet. Can I take a look at it? Yeah, there's a very clear inscription. It says, the scales of justice may be tipped towards mercy or ruthlessness. Regardless, the cost is always life. She looks at you as you read it. I didn't expect to find something like this here. Kind of strange. What do you make of it? Are there four urns or two urns? There are two urns, one on either side of the chamber. Do the urns have anything on them? Uh, not on them. They're just innocuous, plain urns. How about in them? Would you like to open one of them? 
Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Can I like hey guys, look around and see if <laughs> just want to, like see if there's any visible like rigging system or traps or booby traps or anything like that? Uh, roll perception. Sweet. Perception or well, yeah, perception. Hey, check out this bag, Welgwyn. That went really well. Um, so 22. <laughs> Never going to look at another bag, and I'm not opening any of these urns. So looking around the room carefully, uh, the scales are not sort of an individual object. They seem sealed to the shelf upon which they sit. The urns, however, are not sealed. You think you could move them easily. There's clearly a seam beneath the scales to the shelf, which makes it look like a separate object, but if you try to budge it slightly, they don't move at all. So they're clearly affixed to the shelf. You also see what you think might be little seams in the wall uh, to the It's not clear. Okay. Does it look... Does it look like it's just behind the scale or is it like two separate openings on either side? It looks like two separate ones, one on either side of the scale. The rest mm. of the room is fairly innocuous and the stone is silent and dusty. I mean, it looks like something's gonna open up based on what we tilt this towards. The, the pile of skulls also appears to be genuinely a pile of humanoid skulls you could pick them up, kick them over, uh, yeah, move them around however you like. Peek through, see if there's anything in there. If you guys would like, uh, I could use a spell to try to talk to one of these uh, people, see how they died. It's probably a lot better than what I was going to do, which was look for blunt force trauma. So <laughs> They don't seem to have, like, mandibles. They're just the top part of the skull. So you're okay. not really there's sure. No talkable skulls. Yeah. Enough, like, flesh has to be intact that you could actually speak. Not okay, flesh sorry. necessarily. I thought we said that a skull was okay enough last time. Did we? Maybe if it has yeah. a mandible. We have, we have talked to a skull before, so. Yeah. Didn't we talk to the complete, like, bones, though? Like yeah, it was like a full skeleton yeah. last yeah, I'm not, time. I'm not arguing, I'm just saying I, ass I assumed that the skull was fine. Speak with dead, right? Yeah. There may not be rules on this, I don't know, let me see. It says a corpse, first of all, and this is not really a corpse. Part of a corpse? <laughs> yeah. At, at are, what, are we getting into philosophy? Course. Yeah. If, <laughs> if I take a bite out of an <laughs> apple, is it still an apple? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, take a bite out of a corpse. Is it, is it still How an many apple? How bites do you have to take? To get to the center of the corpsey pop. <laughs> oh, no. I can't talk for the rest of the session. Plus one <laughs> weapons for everyone. <laughs> Plus ten weapons for everyone. Oh, um. Okay. Well, let's I it, walk over to the skulls. And just yeah. Fondly. Oh, well, yeah, what I do you make of that? There's like a well, visible, like, um, is there any visible damage to any of the skulls? No, they seem fairly intact. Uh, surprisingly intact, perhaps. Well, I don't love that there are no other body parts here. <laughs> I'm gonna try lifting up the lid on one of the urns now. Okay, which urn would you like to open? First. Ever, the one I'm near, on the right one. On Ever, the right I'm side. Lift the lid off of one of these urns, let's see what happens. I'm gonna try to get out of the way of the two openings that I found, and I would suggest that everyone else do the same, because I feel like something I might to get out, out of the way. Them. I will take that advice. <laughs> Pick up three skulls. Okay. You struggle to hold all three, but it's it's not terribly difficult. I can't hold all these skulls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why can't I hold all these skulls? <laughs> um, so you raise the lid off the urn that is to the right of the shelf. It's full of sand. We can hey, never you know escape what? this joke. <laughs> no. It's every single day I've heard this joke for the past like six days. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what? One? I think things things here are pretty soft, Ellie. So. Oh. 
Ah, nice. Not like my dwarf hold. Uh, who's lifting the other one? Lost? Sure. Why the hell not? Oh, I just thought you said so. No, but that's fine. I will. Okay. Chance is juggling some skulls. Exactly. Actually, I do want to start juggling some skulls. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys! Chance, that's a little uh, disrespectful. From that's your circus dude. days. That's cool. Just disrespectful. You're, you're very awesome. talented. Cora's like, I don't, I don't know if we should be desecrating the dead like that. <laughs> uh, Lost, as you lift the lid of the urn to the left, it seems to be full of some clear liquid. A clear liquid. Yep. Taste it. Can I identify the liquid? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. How do you want to try to identify it? You want to just look at it? Slurp it. Slurp it. Um, I guess I can try to taste a little bit of it. <laughs> okay. Wait, you I dab your pinky poison. finger in it? Yeah. I'm resistant to poison. Let me taste it. It's fairly tasteless. Is it odorless as well? <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm making now I'm making a horrible distillation joke. You start tripping balls. It was pure LSD. No, um, <laughs> an entire urn of it. It's it's fairly tasteless. You sort of waft to try to identify it. It has no odor. Seems like it might be water. Okay. Well, I think this this urn might be full of water. What was that? Uh, what was the inscription on that uh, tablet again? It says um, the scales of justice may be tipped towards mercy or ruthlessness. Regardless, the cost is always life. She kind of like looks around at everyone. Justice is just a, a concept created by those with the power to dispense it. It's, I don't know what this even means. I'm Ruthlessness, guessing. mercy, doesn't matter. I well, look at a Raleigh and I say, I think this means we need to kill someone. <laughs> That's well, what I mean. Uh, what are the scales doing right now? Like, where are they? They're perfectly balanced. That's all things. That's all things. <laughs> <laughs> we should try putting the skulls on the scale, but I'm, we should, I'm, should probably I'm gonna, be careful. I'm going to take a, a water is life kind of uh, interpretation here with uh, with what's in this urn. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, I don't know. Sand is I'm ruthless. juggling these skulls. We, we know about sand. It's coarse and rough, like many ruthless things. It is irritating and gets everywhere. That is true. Yes. All those things are ruthless. Mercy. Nobody's ever used mercy to be coarse and rough and everywhere. Maybe yeah, I mean, I don't know. Justice is kind of a joke told by the rich and powerful. I don't think this really matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's just assume that it does matter so that we don't get attacked by super snakes or something like that. Um, hmm, fair enough. I say... We put skulls on the right side. Is that the life side or the death side? I have no idea. Well, well they're not life and death. We're assuming sand is ruthlessness. Then oh, right. The right, right side is ruthlessness and the left side is mercy. Yeah, I actually yeah, don't know if we need the skulls at all, Chance. I mean, uh, I what, think they're what pretty just, important. What if we just In some cases, ruthlessness is more charitable than mercy, depending on who's receiving it. You're giving me a weird mean. vibe right now, Raleigh. <laughs> We're in a very small room together. I'm gonna need you to pipe down on the existential well, nonsense and not, so not figure guys. out this puzzle. Okay. <laughs> also, um, as a sidebar, a minute ago I looked up uh, colorless and odorless poisons just so I could make a joke about how that's some sort of poison, and now I think I'm on a list. I mean, <laughs> I got really like probably I looked it up. I was like, "Oh, this is stupid. What am I doing?" <laughs> what is it? Like, arsenic. Die tomorrow, and it's gonna arsenic be is crazy. also colorless and odorless when dissolved in water. It? Um, it's arsenic. Yes, I think, I, think I think arsenic doesn't that smell like almonds or ta it maybe it tastes it like almonds. Tastes. It might taste a little bitter. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but it is colorless and odorless. <laughs> now we're all on a list. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other carvings like around the the urns? Anything underneath them? Like, do they look like they're part of anything else, or just on their own? Yeah, there's 
one have a big M on the side of it and the other one has a big <laughs> R? <laughs> no, there are no other carvings anywhere around. It's a fairly simple inscription in front of some scales. Um, we just try putting a skull on one side and see what happens. See? A leak's on my side Can't with the skulls. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. All right. I'll let I'm you guys pick. Gonna Let's flip a coin. Bring the water over, the urn full of water, and then I'm going to step away. <laughs> I don't know, Ali. I'm pretty sure I can interpret this. If they're saying that we can have it towards mercy or ruthlessness, and, and you know, the scales of justice and all, scales of justice have to be right, so mercy is on the right. <laughs> I mean, I think we probably want them balanced, right? I don't know. I feel like we probably do. Well, they already are balanced. They, they're balanced right yeah, now. They, yeah, but they're they balanced with nothing tipped. on them. Hmm. But I feel like they need to be tipped. Yeah, I feel like if we do need to balance it, it's probably going to be the urn on one side and skulls on the other. But I think it just needs to be tipped. It says the yeah. scales may be tipped. Mm, okay. Yeah, whether we go left or Towards right. Towards mercy or ruthlessness. I feel like... Mercy seems like the better option. Mercy is the true path of Helm. So it's written first, that could be left. I don't know. I'm just spitballing again. Well, <laughs> I mean, if we're assuming that the water... I don't know. Waterboarding is not merciful. <laughs> I'm not familiar with this term. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's a dwarven thing. Sport. We dwarves. Play. Don't worry about it. That sounds really fun. <laughs> you get on a board and you... It's, it's actually just surfing. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a very hard sport. <laughs> very competitive. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I think we should tip the scales. put a skull in the left hand side now. All right. Everybody is okay in agreement with that? I'm going to try to remain away from the two openings in the wall. Doing it real yeah. slowly, um, looking around. I, as can do I, I. use my dodge action or something to <laughs> prepare for the Yeah, you can dodge. Happening. Not giving Chance a lot of confidence here. Thanks, guys. I mean, just do you want to be away from the scales? you want to be in the hallway? Or, or you want to be close to Maybe. Yeah, I want to move like back towards the door. Oh, or no! Oh yeah, chance you're putting the skull on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, Good bud. Luck over there. Rooting for you. All right. Timidly shaking, lots of sweat. As you, as you gently, carefully place the skull in the left side of the scales. They tip and sort of sway as they do until you hear <laughs> this doorway to the left of the scales opens. Okay, now try the other way, see what happens. <laughs> I, it's, it was an either or, it didn't say and. I don't know. I mean, maybe it'll let us do both, but someone has to die. You could remove. I don't know what your obsession with people dying is right now for somebody who's Life. tasked with, with protecting all of us. No, no, but I'm tasked with protecting everyone in the party. If you're curious about... Fair enough. <laughs> um, if you pick up the skull, um, does the door shut? Probably, I mean... I'll pick up the skull. <gasps> the scales shift back into place. Oh my god, can I not do it? There. And everything breaks. <laughs> okay, the wall so, closes back up. So we don't actually know if we did it right. Uh, it sounds like we have two potential paths on our hands here. Well, well we why don't we do one and then the other? We're not fully scientific yet with it. Let's <laughs> now put the skull on the right scale. Fine. Okay, and then after that, we'll do the skull on both. And I'm scales. Sure it's going to be the same, but you never know. The scales, <laughs> as you place the skull, tip, sway a bit. Oh, 
Okay. What do we see down this hallway? Does it look different than the other hallway? Uh, the hallways actually look virtually identical except one turns the one on the left very quickly turns to the left and the one on the right very quickly turns to the right beyond that you haven't really looked deep enough to see <laughs> and you guys said the skulls didn't matter just saying <laughs> Did yeah, well that? they were the solution to the puzzle I mean, I think we could have put anything on there. Yeah, that's kind of what it's seeming like right now. <laughs> it was the skulls. That was the key. Uh, so what, let's put a skull on the other side and one on either side and make it balanced again. Okay. See what happens then. I'm Is that what you do, Chance? Or sure. Ali, yeah. do you want to do it? All right, you place the skull on the other side. The scales swing out of alignment or swing out of their, their tipped state back into their default state. The door closes. All right, let's try two skulls on one side now and leave the other skull. Oh my god. <laughs> that means we just pick which side and we'll go with that. It's going to have two skulls on it. Okay, I think we should go to the left side first, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the urn of water, and I'm just okay. going to hold on to it for now. That's okay. That's choice. Yeah. Um, do we want to leave someone in here to uh, maybe be able to let us out if the skull falls off or gets knocked off by some nefarious snake? Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily uh, wise. Yeah, I don't know that I like that idea. I feel like we'll just so get the split apart. the doors open from the bottom or the top? They open from the side. They're not sliding up and down. Okay. They actually swivel open um, like test. a door. Oh, they swivel? Let's test putting like a skull or a bone or something in the way and if it'll leave it a small crack open. Um, um, we might be able to either pry it open or have lost go through some yeah, if that's, we're in an emergency. That's a really good idea. And also, are they stone? Are these walls stone? They are stone. They do appear to be stone. And uh, so, when one of them opened, did I about how thick was the wall? Uh, you would guess like eight to ten inches thick. Pretty thick. Okay, interesting. Well, so I could probably shape an opening in the stone too if we need to, magically. Magic. Like I tried on the main door, but that didn't work because it was not stony enough. Mm -hmm. It was stony well, enough. Try. You were actually like magically repelled. I was magically repelled. Yeah. Do, do I know I was magically repelled? You do. You you feel like the magic should have worked, and the only way it could have not worked is if the door were enchanted, basically. Ah. All right. So well, this doesn't seem like magically enchanted stone, so it should probably. Do I think that's the case? Does it seem magically enchanted? You could roll Arcana to see if you think this, these doorways Why are magically not? enchanted. Let's try putting a knot skull on the bars too, and then uh, then we'll know for sure. Uh, what's your one. Arcana bonus? Minus one. <laughs> you haven't the slightest clue. Okay. Well, um, let's find something and experiment with locking the door open and see if it works. Let's see, what do I have? I'm sure I have some stuff. But try to keep a distance in case the magic of the door gets angry. <laughs> I really don't have anything. I have an old Warhammer that I don't use because I use the Crushinator. I'll use, I can use that. I have a belaying pin. I'm not really sure of the dimensions of a thing like that myself as armor. Oh. Uh... Isn't that like a pulley? It's it's basically a piton, oh, that, right? Yeah, okay. That's a sailing thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, belaying is it a sailing thing? Belay the line, yeah. I mean. Okay, it's, I don't know. it's a it's a climbing thing, but Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's a it's I think a rope, it's probably it's both. A, it's a roping technique. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's yeah, it's a thing. It's a rope technique, but It's still. a thing you rope. With. It's a thing you rope. It's, with. Ro it's roping. It's rope. No, no, it isn't roping, but anyways. If you ever go to a climbing gym, you the you, you can you can get involved in a relationship. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so what are we doing? Let's, let's stick a thing in front of it. Stick a skull in front of the door. Yeah, here. Well, yeah, neither door is open currently. Take, yeah, I'm gonna put the one on the left hand side. Let go. So yeah. we've now got two skulls on the left hand side and one on the right, and it still opens. Yeah, shifts. Okay. 
Um, yeah, can we like? Does anybody have pitons? Because we can like hammer the pitons under the door. See if that mm -hmm. helps. So, I think like, well, Gwen does. Yeah, open. I think I have one. Look. <laughs> or at least ten thousand. Yeah, I've got some. Might. You can throw one in there. If anybody has something that they can like hammer it in with. All I've got is. You want to, oh, I actually hammer. also have a hammer, so I will oh. hammer a, pi a piton into the ground in front of like as a block. You do it as like a doorstop, you know, like a yeah. wedge under the door. You're like, yeah, so like in front of the door once it's open. But more than one, because one's not going to stop it. Like it's in the hallway? Thing. Yeah, I'll do a couple in the hallway. Okay. It's going to take a little bit of time to hammer those in. Can I do Maybe uh, someone who is stronger than either? me should help. <laughs> you could do it with the, <laughs> with the crusher. I also you could. have more hammer. All right, let's roll strength. Let's have Nerida do it, yeah? Yeah, let's yeah have Nerida I'll do it. it. She's a big strong lady. She is a big strong I'm a big, lady. Strong lady. Uh, sixteen, right? Because you're plus four. Can I help her with yeah. my athletics? Sure. Do you have athletics? If it's athletics, I, I have, have proficiency. Athletics. Oh God! So that's twenty. Um, yeah, no Do problem it. at all. Boom, boom. Cool. Within the matter of like a minute or so, you've managed to get four pitons in, right in front of where the door might close. That's probably good. I think it will notice if it has any effect. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then it's too good of a door. All right. All right. Get out of there. This will show you to give us a choice. I <laughs> should we? Should we go? The well, treasure so waits, was, right? Was now to try to, to to close the door and see what happens. So yeah, try to close the door. Oh. And see if it... Okay. So we take um, a skull off the left side and make it balance again. <laughs> All right. The scales swing back into position. The pitons snap in half as the door barely manages to close over Aww, top of Oh, my pitons. I'm sorry. Nah, they okay. sort of like grind into the stone below and then bend and snap. Um, we can give up on that or we could try to put something just right at the edge of where the door closes so there's just a little bit of a gap and see if that is enough. Like we can't prop the whole thing open but it should take less work to just keep it a crack. I think we should just go one way or the other. Yeah, okay. you know. When well, I wasn't trying to, to get us to go both ways, just so Wait. we have a way back, maybe. Do the water? Hmm. Can I try something? Can I pick up the water? Or who has the water right now? Lost is holding the urn of water. Okay. Yep. I'm curious as to like if one of these is heavier than the other. Oh, like the sand and the water. Yeah, like maybe if we put them both on, then it'll tell us which way we're supposed to go. Oh, I told you, the skulls were the key. I mean, it would still depend on which side we put them on, but I'm I'm game. Well, I guess that's it. true, but we could put them Good on idea. the sides that they correspond with. Can we Fair put enough. the urns on the scales, or are they too heavy? Okay, so you heavy? lift each urn to try to see which one is heavier? We want to put them on the scales. Yeah. Unless you remove the skulls the that are on the scales. Yeah. And then just, they are very obviously different in weight. The one with sand in it weighs much more. Oh, okay. Well, then we know that. Ruthlessness weighs more heavily on the soul, as everyone knows. <laughs> um, sure. Hmm. What do you guys think? Do you want to continue trying this, or do you just want to go with the, the one that's on the left? Like we were I mean, do? I think since we don't know how to raise up, that well um platform anyway we may as well just keep going okay we're pretty much stuck down here potentially already all right so are we flipping a coin or are we just going left or I might as well flip a coin yeah. i like the coin let fate decide let helm decide our fate i should say <laughs> well i don't know about any of that but I'm fine leaving it to Chance. Everyone else? Chance, what do you think? Uh, we're leaving it to Chance, right? Yeah, we're leaving it to Chance. Oh, that's not what I meant, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't have a coin. 
I mean, Chance, I have, you have a coin? Actual, oh, there's a coin. You, right you have a lot of coins. Oh, okay. Well, I know Chance. we have actual coins. I mean, on the table. Chance, do you have a coin to flip? <laughs> Is he AFK or what? Tim. Tim. <laughs> Tim. Is he asleep? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a coin to flip to decide which one of these to go down? Man, I told you, I wish you go down the right. Doesn't TTS have coins? Wait, we didn't say which way was which. <laughs> well, we're going heads way. way. <laughs> All right, so let's do it again. Heads is left, tails is right. Okay. Put, put me that coin. Heads. Left it is. Woo. All right, put me a skull on the left door. Let's bring both Raleigh scoops a skull off the ground and slams it down on the left one, like pressing it down. <laughs> Seemingly, like, frustrated with how long this has taken. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grabbing this. No, thing this there. isn't this is not a DM thing. This is a Raleigh. <laughs> yeah, I got the sand urn. The sand urn is urn. quite heavy. Um <laughs> You could it's also not sealed. If you place it in your pack, it is likely to spill and just get sand all over your pack. Fight will all right. down gently. I'm just gonna hold your your urn. Just set it down on the other side of the door, and we can come back. Yeah, actually, that's what I'm gonna do. It. Set it down Fucking the other side of the kook. Door. Okay. <laughs> um, so, moving into the left corridor here, the secret doorway reveals a tight passageway which takes a quick left turn. Around the corner are pegs drilled into the ground with bits of tattered rope hanging from them. Just beyond this, it seems the mire has intruded into the temple and dark, still waters rise to the edges of the stone. 20 feet across from you lies a similar scene, another couple of pegs with dangling bits of rope, and beyond that, another hallway, which also seems to quickly turn. Can everyone see this? Yes. Yep. I mean, so is who's there supposed to be anything first? in there? Nope. Okay. This is I'll be water, murky, fire water. Arali yeah. will go second. So there's, I'll fall third. Oh God. I'll be. Aura being cautious and out of her element will be right. somewhere in the back. Yeah, I'll be next to Cora for yeah. solidarity sake. <laughs> wasn't like a rope bridge thing it was like just loose it looks like there may have been a rope bridge at one point but it's long since severed uh, we want to try the other way and see if <laughs> see if that works better <laughs> there's just water in front of you it is dark and we murky. could try to yeah, toss a just... stone in and Ooh, see give if me anything. a skull that's all <laughs> <laughs> There's a skull in the water? Check Let's a skull, skull in, the water. in the water. Maybe pour some of the water from the water urn. Maybe it's magical. <laughs> I'll try anything at this point. Uh, but yeah, I want to throw uh, one of the skulls into the water just to see how deep it All is. Alright, you throw a skull in. It quickly disappears into the murky water. Hmm. Roll perception. Hey. Wow, that's just flat 19. Oh, flat 19. It quickly disappears into the murky water. You sort of strain, um, especially since there's no light source. What is a, the light source, if any, that we're using to move around here? He's got dark vision. Uh, I have dark vision. Yeah, we have so torches. Bad. Yeah, but you still can't see super well with dark yeah. vision. You can just see. Um, I'm, I think a Raleigh had a torch lit. I think we had a couple torches, and I think I and had I a think lantern. Lost, had a torch lit, yeah, and Walgwyn has a lantern. So it's oh, yeah. dimly lit around the corner here, and the, the skull disappears into the murky water. Not really sure. Right. So, Holly, uh, I don't know how it works, but can you use that lantern to make sure there's no monsters in the water like you did outside the temple? Oh, yeah. Um, I could probably do that. Super smart. Also, while she's doing that, I want to try. I want to pour a little bit of the sand out of this urn, and does the weight change, or does it feel like it's endless sand urn? The weight does change. You, you dump some sand; it feels a bit lighter. You look in; the sand level seems lower. 
it's not a magical sander, and I thought this might be a way across. <laughs> she taps just her the lantern of water. I was saying, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and just walk across our um, sandbox. There might be something in there. If it is, it's it's kind of deep, maybe. Wait, it's gone. That's not reassuring. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what happened. I haven't used this lantern a ton. Maybe it's maybe it's not working. How does it usually work? Does it detect ill will or any creature? Or? It reveals most creatures that are not immediately visible. Like, not in line of sight to the lantern. Mm -hmm. Everyone around the corner notices that there's like a subtle pink glow emanating from them. Uh. As the lantern is sort of... How often can you do that? I can just turn it off and on. Oh, that'll be useful, hopefully. Yeah. This well, is my lantern, I mean... though. Yes, no. Just so I we're understand. clear. <laughs> Um, but, so you think, how far away can it detect things, do you know? Uh, I think it's like 30, 40 feet, something like that. Okay. So if there is something I haven't tested there, it too much. 30 or 40 feet away from us. Okay. Maybe. It was a faint glow, and then it disappeared. But I swear I saw it. Okay, so there's stump, there's definitely something in the water. Yeah. Well, how do we get across the water without going in it? Or how do we get the thing out of the water to kill it and then go across? Well, we can't throw stuff at it because we threw the skull and it didn't go after that. Uh, Chance, you are a man of ice. Lost you too. Can you freeze the top? I... I can walk across? Maybe summon a land bridge with your nature magics, boss. You know. I'm not sure. I don't think the water's deep enough for me to do anything. It's very hard to tell how deep the water I, I, as is. As a person, I'm trying to see what control water does again. Which it I allows you have. to like move water around or like create, uh, some, like small. See, until the spell ends, you can control any freestanding water inside an area you choose that is a cube up to 100 feet on a side. Yeah, that's a lot of water. You can part it, you can redirect it, you can create a whirlpool, or you can cause it to flood, you can causing the water to rise. Go across. Whatever it is can't get us because it won't be in the this water. This is a fourth level spell, though. Also, that might just end up with like a huge drop off with a floor underneath yeah, yeah. that we yeah. then couldn't get out of. Uh, uh, so who's feeling swimmy? <laughs> <laughs> I've got plate armor on, so I mm. can't do much swimming. Same here. So the ropes on the side, do they just lead into the water? They are severed. Okay. So <laughs> they they clearly end before they even reach the ground. And they're sort of threadbare towards the end. What the... There, do you, just, do you still have a fair amount of rope? I do. I think if we can get one person across, we could we could get a rope across, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Who has levitation? What are the walls made of in there? Or the walls appear to be the maybe? same stone. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's possible. You could try Nate Chained. If anybody even has it. Can... It, it, so they're they're stone, but are they, are they made of brick? Yes, they're brick with very clear mortar in between. Can uh, can I try to uh, evoke my boots to see if they can uh, penetrate the mortar? Sure. 
You put your foot on the wall and evoke the boots. These sort of magical roots grow out of the boots and entangle around the brick in through the mortar, just barely penetrating it. Sort of test it a bit. Feels pretty solid. You feel like you could, could maybe walk. Okay. I want to attempt to walk around the perimeter to the other side. Take All a right. with you. Yeah, I'm well, yeah. I'll, I, I, if someone wants to uh, give me one end Arali of the throws rope. you an end of rope. Yeah, Here. there we go. If you fall in, throw the rope to the other side before you die and tie it off. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks, Alec. So, sideways lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Hey, wait, before he does this, do tieflings die if they touch water? <sighs> <laughs> no, and I've swam in front of you before, Alec. God. Sort of carefully, since this is the first time you've done this, you feel the blood rushing to the side of your head as you stand sideways against the wall, trusting that the boots will hold you. Get to about here, and then... 14 tentacles come out of nowhere! (laughs) Aureli's like, what's that? You see a pink glow again in the water. And maybe a marshal out here. That's gonna be twenty-one to hit. Well, that obviously fucking hits. <laughs> <laughs> Not so good at dodging when you're standing sideways on a wall with your magnetic vine boots. You thought you were so smart. Out of the water, oh boy. Out of the water snaps this enormous snake, except instead of flesh, it's merely bone. And it claws directly, its jaws just sink into the side of Lost. Oh my god, that was almost maximum damage. As he's walking along the side, snap into him he screams in agony let me get it out (sighs) snaps into his side trailing blood as it leaves you take 13 piercing and 17 poison damage as the snake bites into you and let's roll initiative it is large it is large. Hmm. Good to know. Uh, for some reason, the music is just not going. It's like trying to have Greg load it, and it's not working. But we'll see. There it goes. There we go. And we'll roll for a Raleigh. Oh, damn. You go, Raleigh. She's like, oh, shit. Damn, she was ready. Look out. It's a little late now, though. Uh, hmm, what can she do? Bone snack. Ah, that would be good, probably. Okay. Oh my god, a 20-foot cube is pretty big. A Raleigh lifts her hand, says some magic words, and summons forth. 
an enormous network of webs that snatch out and grab onto this boner snake <laughs> <laughs> and lost. Um, let's see. They basically go across this entire area here, covering it. Oh, good. We can walk across them. Uh, guys, there's a horrible bone snake. She like runs in and runs past all of you. It's got lost. Lost, it's your turn. Roll a dexterity save. Do, 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 do. Hey, you, sweet. you are unfortunately restrained by the webs. Of course I am. You can still act, but you cannot move. Flex and bust out of there. Flex and bust out of there. Can do that. Um. Mm. Is spider webs? Yes. Well, webs. Pretty yes. Webs. You, can still, you can still cast, right? Like somatic spells. Yes. Can I? He has to move his hands. That's fine. Uh, I want a wild shape into a spider, so that I can. A regular spider. A small spider. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a it's a tiny spider, That's a little nice. tiny spider. Okay. <laughs> Your shape shrinks, shrivels down into this tiny, I don't know how big, garden spider? Little brown spider? Spider that is listed is just a tiny beast. It's just called a spider. <laughs> okay. Let's get us. I'm sure there's a spider in here. Should have been some of those spiders that build like those spider rafts. You attacked it with your spider raft. Yes, spider rafts. That's a legit thing. Maybe I'm thinking of ants. Ants, ants, ants do that. Definitely yeah. ants. Yeah. 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 No, I've seen spiders that do it. Well, out spiders of, like, might do it too. Like, I don't rafts. know. But, yeah. yeah, I think it's it's ants I'm thinking of. With the, the ones like, that like, literally the turn grab into a little. Yeah. Yeah. Little lost spider. Could have done that. It's fire ants specifically, I think, that are like the ones that form the ball. Devil ants. Reminds me of tieflings a lot, actually. <laughs> All right, this is lost spider. Uh, you successfully wild shape, and it does seem to free you. Hey, oh, yeah. look at my little cute little spider self. <laughs> um, does he have web sense? He knows exactly where it is at all times as he's touching the web. Let's see. Let's, let's see. Yes, I do. Web sense and web walks. Web walker. So oh, I'm good. This thing just stops after one. It's weird. Try this. Making fun of your DJ abilities. Yeah, I don't really like what you're playing. Ah, that's too serene. Oh, we're fighting a giant boner spider. You, you have an attack reach of five feet. Boner snack. Just in case you didn't know. It's amazing. You have the longest. From all the sense tank. that makes. Uh, <laughs> like, this is already what we listen to. Come on, there's a freaking playlist. Play it all. All right. Oh no, that's what we listened to. All right, well, what would you like to do as a spider? Uh, well, now did the uh, save count as save? Just happens at the beginning of your turn if you're in the webs. Okay, it's not so any then, action. Um, I am going to. I'm gonna. I'm going to basically crawl up onto the ceiling. If, All right. Assuming I can. Uh, but the like still on the same still, still on the <laughs> same tile. Uh, right. like in the same general vicinity but trying to get get kind of out of the main main path of interest of this boner snake. Okay. <laughs> sort of slithering up the walls, but it's now caught in the web potentially. That brings us to Korra. Um, let me see. She runs over. Just 
quickly with her sort of hunter sense unleashes two arrows. Uh, she's not going to take the minus five, which was a good call. Let me see. <clears throat> They'll both hit because I think she's plus 10. But this is not a beast. So first one is d8. She is not unseen and no one's threatening really. So that'll be, I think it's plus five. I don't remember. 10 damage. Okay, the second one is that. Plus five is 12. She darts back around the corner. It's a horrible skeleton snake. I don't know where Lost went. Might have killed him. Everyone thinks I'm dead, yep. That <laughs> brings us to chance. Son of a bitch! Oh yeah, when you turn into the spider, the rope falls into the water as well. Oh. Okay. Well. But her Raleigh just like pulls it with her as she darts around the corner. I'm gonna run up, take a view, and I think it's time to make this motherfucker hurt. I would like to cast a fourth level scorching ray all right three blasts does that make it four blasts that makes that five blasts uh, so you blast the fiery rays from your hands and that's all plus ten. Oh wow fucking really uh, let's see, so 16, 26, 14, 11, 18. Uh, three hits and one crit fail, which scorches you, but it's fire damage. For one point of fire damage. Because <laughs> one of them backfires slightly. So three hits, though. Also, this will ignite the webs, I imagine. Yes, that's what I was going for. <laughs> Let's see. Nine, nine, and four. So, it's a 22. Okay, 22 fire damage just pours onto this bony snake. It, if it, it like chitters, the bones clatter together. Deep scorch marks left by the rays. And the webs burst into flames. Uh, yeah, so there's like a big old fire here. Let me see if I have a fire. <laughs> Let's... Also... There we go. Oh, not on top of it like that. All right, the webs burst into flames. The snake is feeling pretty bad. All right, and then I'm going to walk back to everyone else, be like, <laughs> "Let it on fire!" <laughs> No acknowledgement that you also didn't see me. <laughs> it's true. Uh, uh, that brings us to Welgwyn. We know you're missing. I just lit the whole room on fire. God. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move to here. If I'm here, can I get like a line of sight on the snake? Yes. Can I also hide behind this corner? Yes. You would cool. have to use your bonus. Uh, yep, I'm gonna use my bonus action to move, and since I move less than half of 
Advantage. Think you get advantage on the stealth roll? Yeah. If I remember correctly. Yep. So supreme sneak. You're very sneaky. So sneaky. So that's... Critical sneak. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty sneaky. You're, cool. You're the most hidden. I'm so, so hidden. And then I'm going to uh, shoot at this big snake boy with my right. sharp bow. So, so that, reeling yeah. around the corner, there's this enormous gout of flames just burning smokelessly as the webs like spread rapidly with flames <gasps> amongst it is this horrible writhing mass of bones and those are the sounds that it was making it goes <laughs> like, rolled a hit with I advantage yeah. <laughs> it's kind of beautiful in a terrifying way occasionally the snake goes so that's a 20 to hit. <laughs> That'll hit. All right. Go ahead and, and roll damage with sneak five attack. 56. 66. 66. 66. 60 D6. All right. <laughs> cool, cool. Through the fire and flames, uh, your arrow pierces and just hits the snake towards its head and knocks out like a pivotal bone starting a chain reaction as the snake like whips around its bones just fly out in all directions and scatter before settling into the marshy water below we need to play some dragon forest while fighting yeah exactly uh, yeah guys i i think i shot it apart the flames persist <laughs> It's still on fire, but I, there's not a snake there anymore, so. <laughs> Mixed bag, I guess. Uh, okay, we, we could end combat. However, <laughs> lost <laughs> as your spider, you're gonna take 2d4 fire damage. Oh no. Six like, fire damage. Am, am I am I still ah. resistant to fire damage? No, as not as a spider. spider. You gain all damage. of its physical properties. So how many? Six what fire I damage. I mean, well, then I turn back into myself. Okay, and any spillover damage is subject to your resistance. Okay, well, spider, tiny spider has one hit point, so... Okay, <laughs> I was so hoping. you take two fire damage... <laughs> You also plummet yeah. into the water below. <laughs> God damn it. As you transform back. And I need you to make a strength check. You hit the water. And for a moment, you're like, oh, I can swim. And then as you reach your arm, you feel your arm being restrained by something. And you feel... Maybe vines, you're not sure. Coursing all around you, holding you down. Yeah, well. And you're that was, beneath the surface of the water. It's just a flat five. Can so. any of us see him or anything? I should nope. still be able to, right? You, yes. As you took your shot, you know, you see the snake sort of die. <laughs> and then you see Lost just like expand <laughs> from the ceiling and fall down into the water go beneath like plunge beneath its surface and he doesn't come up all right i'm gonna call it to the others and be like um lost his back he's in the water and i think he needs our help right now what's that you check strength check on? total five. Oh god uh, yeah if you are restrained beneath the surface of the water can i wild shape into you would have to turn back into yourself, I believe, before I already am myself. Oh, you already are. You're right. Yeah. Hold on a second. I need to look at what I actually feel like. Turn into a water buffalo. Well, I've got I've got frogs. They can swim. Um, that's what's prepped. Turn into six seahorses. Turn into a swarm of raft ants. <laughs> <laughs> Again, okay, you're not just not swimming. There are vines or plants of some kind that seem to have like reached out and entangled you seem to be holding you in I'd place like to see them hold swarms of things <laughs> that's true 
I'll shape into a platypus. Tell the plants you're on their side. <laughs> That's yeah, true. You could do that. You could actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Summon some dryads to talk to them. Um, I well, I mean, shit. I can talk to I can talk to plants myself. If so, I think it's vines that are uh, that are holding. Me. Does seem like it. You also can't speak underwater, so any verbal spells or anything you try to cast will fail. I speak Excuse with plants, me. not telekinetic. Can we like do stuff now? Or, or... yes. Okay. Um. Can I go around the corner and kind of hold my glaive out towards them quickly? Uh, you're not even sure where he was because you never saw okay. him fall, but Bulgwin could maybe point him out to you. Yeah. He's okay, in there. You, you hold the, I assume, the handle of your glaive out towards yeah. where he was. All right. I don't know. I mean, fin it, cut fingers is better than dr say, uh, ground. Yeah, it's got a blade a on either side, so, you know. Sorry. <laughs> That's what's in my hands. <laughs> um, okay, you you put your glaive out into the water. Actually, is is hers a double bladed glaive? Like, is it I like thought she switched it out it on one side, and I switched it out, and I don't know if we clarified whether it was still. I think it or not, was or for a normal anymore. glaive. Okay, oh. then I do this blunt end. Okay. Uh, roll three d six. Can you roll it for me? Oh, yeah. Just been here for a while. Um, nah, you are just sort of rooting your glaive around in the water. As you do, you feel something sort of tugging on it, and it takes a bit of effort to try to get it back. Did any of it, like, come off with the glaive when I get it back? <laughs> As you pull it back out of the water, succeeding on your strength check, um, there are little bits of what looks like maybe kelp or some sort of plant okay. wrapped around the glaive that you've snapped off. Um, Lost, what's your con mod? Can I see where his Plus face two. is at all? Sorry to okay. interrupt you. You can't see where Lost is at all. The water is okay. still... There, there's a slight disturbance like throughout the water. Something seems to be Harali, struggling. can you use your lantern to help us find Lost? Oh, uh, yeah. She runs over, taps her lantern, and this section glows underneath the surface, muted by the dark waters, but still the glow can be seen. I, th I think he's there. Can I see him? Can I? I still can't see him at all. From like the glowy light, I just know where he is. Yeah, you you don't see a I, figure. Is it ten feet away? Like I could reach. It is ten feet glaive. away. You can reach with your glaive. I'll try again. All right. Um. Let's see. Let's just do this again. Okay. Lost, you feel something jab you in the side, and you might be able to reach for it, but you'll have to succeed on a strength check. It's terrifying. Sorry. To move your arm successfully, you're significantly restrained. You're just nice. very restrained as okay, the plants I, encircle you and pull you deeper. I, I want to turn water. into a. I want to turn into a tiny frog. All right. This uh, way can, I'm amphibious and won't drown. Rebet, you rebet. turn into a tiny frog. Your form shrinks down into this <laughs> tiny little amphibious frog. And uh, they can't really breathe the water, but they can hold their breath like effectively and definitely, right? According so. to the description, the frog can breathe air and water. It is oh, okay. literally written in there the first place. There you go. So you can breathe, that's, no problem. That's not how biology works. Work. Right? I know that's, not, that's exactly what I Get thought, but that's what, that's what the player's handbook has written in it, so. It knows all. I try to like scoop the frog onto my slave handle. Okay. You're trying to dissect the frog like biology class. Oh, so definitely you lost. You, you can swim up to the surface. Um, if you you find that like 
The gentler you are, the less the vines seem to be attempting to constrict you. Okay. Well, then I will... So the small, gentle frog, you can sort of... Small, <laughs> whatever, careful frog, you can gently push yourself towards the surface. Rather than rejoining the group, can I... Can I gently swim my way to the other side? Yes. I don't have a frog. <laughs> well, as soon as I get to the other side, I'm going to turn back into myself anyway, so I can sh okay. save you the uh, save you trying to find a frog model. As Nerida, Arali, and Welgwin watch, uh, this frog gently makes its way across to the other side. Look at how gentle you... that frog's being. <laughs> it's very gentle. It's a gentle frog. And then it <laughs> shapes back into Lost. Oh, gross. It was just Lost. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I where do... tieflings come from. <laughs> <laughs> I do not recommend taking a dip in there. <laughs> uh, can we um? Can we get a rope to him somehow? Yeah, one of you... Uh... When you want to tie it off to an arrow or some shit? Yeah, I'll do that. That, that sounds like Cora's time to shine. <laughs> Cora can do that too. <laughs> Cora I'm better at it than I am. Somebody <laughs> ties a bit of arrow or ties a bit of rope, the end of uh, Raleigh's rope to an arrow, shoots it across. Shouldn't have any trouble doing this. Uh, slight trouble. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to hit one of the posts, but it, it goes a bit past. Uh, roll a deck save to grab it before it sinks into the swamp. Not a deck save, a dex check. Yep. Like flies past you and ricochets. Oh my god, that's the best roll I've had today. It <laughs> flies past you and as it hits the stone wall on the far end of the chamber, you grab the rope sort of instinctively. Just, doop, you got it. Pull it taut. Arali starts tying it to the post sticking out of the ground here. I assume and you I tie will, your end. I will end. also tie my end off as well. So, um, it's only a couple feet out of the water. Are we going to walk across it? How's this going to work? We could get another one, maybe. I have two? We could just go hand mm. over foot, you know? Do we have anything that we can use to zip line across it? Well, like a... I don't know if we want to go in the water even a little bit. It I... seems like... Oh, is it going across? Wait, is it going directly across the, the top So it of goes the water, directly it across like... and even fully taut, which it's bound to bow at least slightly. It's only two or three feet above the water. I've got another 50 feet of rope, yes. Yeah, I have rope too. Right. A lot of rope. Cora takes the rope from Welgwin, ties off one end of it to an arrow. Here, couldn't you just throw a leak across? <laughs> this time, she hits the, the peg on the far side square. Gives you ample time to tie it off. You now have two ropes across this chamber. Cora sort of shrugs, turns back to everyone, shrugs her shoulders, grabs one rope, and hooks her feet over the end of the other rope and starts shuffling across. This will be fairly trivial for her. Yep, she makes it across no problem. Dismounts, jumps over lost even. Um, um, I think I'm right. Do you want to go next? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll go I'll if you go don't want to go, but... Uh... I'll, I'll go next. Okay. I'll scamper across there. Roll an acrobatics check. Uh, okay. Acrobatics or athletics. Definitely Imagine acrobatics. acrobatics. That is okay. an 18. Similar to Cora, you make it across, no problem. All right, I think I can do it. Wish me luck. You got it, girl. Break a leg. Don't. What? Don't break anything. Scamper on over here. Oof. Oof. Oh, no. uh -oh. Oof. 
Arali makes it to here before her feet slip and she swings around into the mire. You'd think she would swing sort of through, but as soon as she splashes down into the mire, she's stuck. Uh, uh, something's got my feet. Oh boy. Something's got my legs. Uh, uh, don't panic. Uh, Try to be as gentle as possible. I don't like this. I don't like this anymore. Be a gentle, gentle frog. Gentle frog. All right, I'm gonna relax. As she relaxes, she's slung down underneath the water. Oh no! Relax, relax your feet, not your hands, dummy. I agree. She didn't appear to let go in any way. Um. Just. I, I agree. <laughs> These are the sounds Rally makes as she. <laughs> uh, Little I bubbles come out, to, emitting to, squeals. <laughs> actually, gonna I'm gonna go ahead and cast uh, speak with plants. Okay. Um, now that I'm above the water. Uh, I'm trying to reach her with my glaive and while he's doing that as well. Stop stabbing people. I can't f- help it. <laughs> A few seconds so later, she pops up to the surface. <gasps> Gasping and clambering as best she can. <sighs> she sort of turns each way. <sighs> Decides to go for it. Swims here. You see sort of vines tugging at her, pulling her. They pull her down under again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna cast speak with plants, and I'm gonna say, "Hey, can you, can you let can you let us go? We, we mean you no harm." Be a little bit more forceful. <laughs> I'd like to I like to be nice with my plant friends. They're being dicks. But yeah, it's supposed to affect all plants within 30 feet of me. The plants sort of waver underneath the water's surface. So the mire consumes. You are no exception. What they say? It sounded like they were being dicks. They are. They're be- they're being super lame. I am not inviting you guys to our party. <laughs> <laughs> we are the mire. We consume. Uh, what if I gave you something else to consume? What do you offer? Um, I've got a ham shank. Yeah, so we've got some. We got a ham shank. I got some rations. I have a a bottle of ogre blood. There's this splashing about. Oh, did she do it? Uh, I'm not gonna give give them the doom seed. No, give not just the doom seed. She's splashing and writhing underneath the surface, forming ripples all the way up to the top. Been down there a little bit now. Yeah, and that's how I really um. died. Um, <laughs> get her out of here. Close of you guys. Yeah, I don't. Try again oh, so to small. free herself. She surfaces. <gasps> Swims a bit. You're doing great. It's awful. Now that she's... <sighs> she makes it to the edge. Can I come try to pull her up? Yeah. Boop. Roll athletics. Alright. She's pulling herself as well. <sighs> she grabs your hands. It's clearly being pulled under. It's a 10. But together you manage... Actually, no. Her oh hand no. slips from you. No, Again, really. she's beneath the surface. Shit. Um. Together you manage nothing. <laughs> Fuck, what can I do? I want to, like, stick my crowbar down in there. to see if I can, like, Roll give 3D6. that to her to grab onto. 
Roll 3d6. Roll 3d6. All right. Ooh, nope. Gonna be good. Can I? Start She's splashing out in the water. It's not working. Mm. Yeah, you can start. You can start crossing. Roll athletics or acrobatics. Your choice. Acrobatics, because athletics would be terrible for me. Uh, Seventeen. All right. Yeah, you make it across. I want to like stop where I thought a rally was. And, okay. Like try to like hold myself and like reach into the water a little bit. <laughs> Okay. You're gonna fall in. It's gonna be a reach in the water. Make an athletics check. Oh no! What do you think was gonna happen? Why did you do this? Hey! Hey! You reach into the water. You feel the vines latch around your arm, but you dig deeper into the water. Everyone watching, you see Chance bow. His chest is like dipping and touching the edge of the water, the top of the water, as he turns himself and reaches as deep as he can down in. He seems to have gotten something. He pulls. You pull as hard as you can. A Raleigh emerges from the surface of the water, <gasps> gasping and reeling, still constricted by plants, but you pull and pull, and the plants start snapping and breaking and releasing. You lift her up. <sighs> she splats down onto the edge of the stone here, wet and <laughs> traumatized. Oh. oh, God. Oh, thank you. I... <sighs> I can see what you're talking about, Lost. <laughs> hey, look, there you go. You easily pull yourself onto the edge here. Everyone's sort of piling up at this point. Well, that was next? the single most impressive thing I've ever seen you do, Chance. <laughs> uh, well, we only left the heavy people behind, so this is going to be interesting. I'll try to do that. All right, roll athletics. Can you roll for me? Oh, yes. Also, can I guide myself? <laughs> yeah, you can guidance yourself. Uh, assuming you can cast it. Yeah, that's... Oh, boy, do you want to cast that. Yeah, you're able to reach out to Umberly. It is difficult, but you manage to. Yeah, despite your heavy gear, your, your strength pulls you through, and your devotion to Umberly helps guide you. Uh, in how to like flex and stay taut and make sure you don't dip or your balance go awry. You make it all the way across. We're starting to sort of pile up over here. That leaves one. <laughs> the squeal of victory right. emerges. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go. Athletically. Athletically. <laughs> Oh. oh, or not. God the geez. moment you attempt, you grab both sides of one rope and you've got one foot on the other <laughs> and you lift your other foot onto the rope and you slip, <laughs> splash down in. Roll an athletics check. Take <laughs> one. <laughs> oh my oh, God. No. Just, oh no. <laughs> oh. You feel yourself oh, sinking oh. rapidly, pulled down by the plants. All right, I can still move though, right? Like I can cast a spell. Uh, you can cast spells that do not have verbal components. Oh, let me see if because you cannot it speak. Does. Hmm. Underwater. <laughs> Damn. I'll be right back. I gotta pee so bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right i'm just gonna try well I'll wait till he gets back i had a plan and then i forgot about speaking <laughs> yeah it's don't we all, <laughs> don't we all right? and then how it always goes i just love how the thing that always takes us the longest in these 
is the thing that I would never think would take a long time. <laughs> right. He's like, Cross there's some the water track. You can go left or right. We're like, hold on. <laughs> well, can we go both? <laughs> Let's try all possible iterations here. I want to see all the treasure chests. I want to see treasure chests that I never dreamed possible. Right. Just everything. Legendary items, come on. Well, maybe yeah. there's one at the bottom of this gross oh, water well, hole. If there is, I'll so, find it. Yeah. Oh, it's just yeah. like I, I can use create and destroy water over and over and over again. <laughs> it's a level one spell. I can, I can remove things 10, uh, 10, 10 gallons at a time. So in like three weeks, I'll be safe. Good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like drink yourself out of the beer vat you just fell into. But that doesn't work even in that movie. No, he 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 does consume quite a lot of it though before he falls vic falls vic victim to it. If you were completely submerged in a liquid like that, do you think you could eat like you could drink stuff around you if it was drinkable easily, or would that yeah. fuck you up? It it. it It'd be tricky. Put your head in a bathtub and try to drink. Yeah, there, so there are tricks to it. Um, so, yeah, since I'm way down there, I want to try to break free on my next... All right, break. roll athletics. I will. For everyone else watching, it's been about 10 seconds. You can hold your breath for quite some time because I imagine you have a good con modifier. That's a lot of athletics, though. 17. All right. You break free, <clears throat> and you could swim upwards or... What you perceive as maybe forwards. All right, you swim upwards. Make gently. another athletics check. Do I have to make an athletics check if I do it gently? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's better than before. Okay, you're just pulling and tugging against the uh, the vines, but you manage to make it to the surface. All right. Will I be able to hoist myself up back onto the ropes, or will that be very difficult? They're three feet above the water. You doubt you could jump out of the water far enough to reach them. I cast Otaluke's Resilient Sphere. Okay. Myself. I'll have to look up what that is. It is encircles me in a weightless sphere, which I assume means it's also buoyant. Um, nothing can pass in or out, but I can breathe in it. How do you spell it? Oda. If you type Resilient Sphere, you'll get you'll get it. <laughs> I imagine. Okay, yeah, it's just called Resilient Sphere. A uh, sphere of shimmering force encloses a creature or object. An unwilling creature, blah, blah, blah. Nothing, not physical objects, energy, or other spell effects can pass through the barrier, in or out. Uh, the sphere is immune, and uh, you're fearing the sphere you can breathe. The sphere is immune to all damage, and a creature or object inside can't be damaged, blah, blah, blah. It's weightless, just large enough to contain a creature. An enclosed creature can use its action to push the sphere. Okay, so this odd bubble <laughs> encircles Aliak, which, by the way, make your wisdom check to make sure you can reach out to Helm and cast this. Oddball. Oddball. Odd been better than ball. ball. But I like now, hindsight ball. is 200,000, as they say. It is. You uh, have no problem reaching out to Helm to cast this. This strange sphere <laughs> encircles Alik and he it buoys him out of the mire. Cool, and I'm just gonna roll my way to the other side. <laughs> hamster ball, <laughs> hamster ball, my way to the other side. Yep. You could do that the whole time. Well, I haven't been able to do it for that long, and only for one person. And it's a fourth level spell. Oh, okay. Very wow. expensive. It takes a lot of energy. Yeah. All right. Everyone piles on down the hall also people can push me you it's it's weightless so apparently you can pick it up and like throw it and stuff incredible as you round the corner here a horrific sight oh, is revealed no. wait no i went around the corner first because this lasts for another like well a full minute so then i can absorb all the traps with my resilient sphere all right you see Other a similar park, sight rounding the next the corner. <laughs> um, tie a rope around my bubble. 
<laughs> That's no, not I, possible. I <laughs> I'll push over this one. Uh, that would be like 40 seconds left at least still, I would assume. Yeah. So... As you do, something clamps onto the bottom of your sphere and just uh -huh. ejects you momentarily, and it retreats back down. There's a snake. But you do manage to make it too. across. And then I let it fall. All right. You return to the ground gently. Uh, another one? I don't like this. Do we have enough we rope to get across? <laughs> I, I have I some mean, rope that we can use as well. Yeah, I'm sure we've got plenty of rope. I have rope as well. We can I have a rope. Um, maybe we should just bait the snake out. I don't think we can all make it across without touching the water. It's probably better that none of us are under in its jaws while we're fighting it. I agree. Mm. How do we bait it? Hamshank? Hamshank? <laughs> Hamshank. Hamshank. Looks like we baited. Are you throwing it? Looks like we bait it. Well, I'm Very gonna wait good. for everyone to get in like a position to shoot it. You know, our archers are. Oh yeah, I will. Folks. Up. I guess um, honestly, it's probably just Cora and Welwyn that are the only people. That yeah, can, like, probably be in a similar like, close space. I feel like Merida can stand uh, like right here and stab it. Maybe she's got a long sword. I can certainly try. I do. Sword on a pole. But if <laughs> yeah. if she's there and people are trying to shoot. Past Nerida. Crouch. Crouch and stab. Can I hide behind Nerida preemptively with the understanding that some sure. shit's about to go down? Cool. You want. Here, let's, let's get the order. And I'm missing. You're missing? Yeah, I have no idea where I'm either. Ah, oh, there I am. Yeah, and then I guess we want to re prepare this as like a reaction, right? I'm going to prepare uh, to cast a spell on it when I. I want, to I want to react. Keep in mind that you have to use the spell, and if yeah, you're right. If the thing doesn't happen, you will have spent the spell slot. Yeah, then maybe I don't want to do that. I'm gonna prepare a javelin to throw at it. I have javelins. I always forget. That's fair. Okay. Anyone else want to prepare things? Nope. <laughs> All right. I oh, Nerido, you probably want to re prepare a slash to see if it's animal in range. friendship. So oh yeah. Uh, okay. Eight. I mean, I didn't think I would have to prepare a slash. <laughs> well, then you can use it as a reaction when it comes out. Okay, sure, I prepare a slash. Um, what? I'm going to prepare my juiciest ham shank for throwing. Okay. Tenderize it a little bit with the crushinator, you know, get the <laughs> smells all in the air. What, what is everyone else preparing? Is anyone preparing spells? Chance is preparing to congratulate himself still on pulling a ruby out of <laughs> yes, the water. Uh, can do that. Water. I think Cor is, can, if Cora moves right here, can she shoot around the corner? Yes. Then we want that. Yeah. I'm gonna switch yeah, places. A couple lost. questions. Um, if I prepare a slash, do I get my thunder damage with it? Yes, it counts as an attack. Ooh, You're okay. preparing oh, an attack. Too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, um, if I hide, can I also prepare, or is that like all I can do to get ready? Like, can I also get an? No, you can. You can shoot? hide. It It costs your action to prepare a reaction, so you can use your bonus to hide. Okay. And also, well, you can also just you can just hide. This is plenty yeah. of time. So, so yeah, Cora so will hide, hide as well. And then prepare a shot all for right. obvious get reasons. Ready. Ham shank away. Roll to hide. Cora's quite hidden. Um, I rolled an eleven, so that's an eighteen to hide. Okay, you're quite hidden as well. So I toss the ham shank in. I want to aim for right here, so it's close enough that Nerida can stab it. You want to aim for... I guess, do I need to roll to... Where? Uh, Sorry? This tile right here, so 15 okay. feet. Uh, Yeah, roll in athletics to just see how well you do. Oh my god, that was an interesting roll. Is a ham shank an improvised it's perfect. weapon? perfect. <laughs> sure, yes. <laughs> ham shank is an improvised weapon. Um. Anything is an improvised weapon, right? If it's not an official weapon. <laughs> so you lob the hang shank into the water. Boop, it splashes in. Seems to disappear. Doesn't seem to be any reaction. I don't think it worked. 
<sighs> oh, Alec, not everything can be solved with food. <laughs> Most things can. Mm, I'll agree. Uh, should we just form a rope bridge again? I don't know if we can make it better. Anyway. Can we make it higher off the ground? Off the water? Mm, maybe. We can secure it to the wall. It would take many pitons and someone climbing over there, and as we've seen, things on the wall get bitten by snakes. I mean, if we can secure it to the wall on either side, that would be higher off the ground. We've been securing it to the posts, but they're only a couple oh, of feet I tall. What you mean. Well, either way, the snake is probably going to bite us. I mean, That's I wasn't true. touching the water, and the snake bit me. Well, tried to bite me. Wasn't your? Didn't your sphere touch the water? Shouldn't have. Well, I guess... Yeah, it was did. floating on top of it. I mean, it's weightless, it so it's it kind of like... Right? So I guess it what does it mean to be weightless? Like, that's right, nonsense, that's right? Saying, like, if the, if like the water, water, like, undulates slightly, you're now floating into right. the air. Am I, am I my, like, air friction? You know, if somebody pushes me, do I just go forever in an infinite way? Who knows? Yeah, we'll say you up. sort of skated sense. across the top of the water and didn't disturb <laughs> it at all. Like skipping a stone. It didn't but disturb gently, it at all, though. Yeah, the, the gentlest stone, as we've discussed. Much like a frog would skip a stone, if it was a gentle <laughs> frog. The gentlest stone frog you could imagine. Um, yeah, so... What are we doing? That strategy works for, for me, I guess. I mean... Yeah, if we can secure it to both of the walls on either side of like the the openings yeah maybe we can use like a crowbar or something as like a secure like something that we can like we have pitons well welgun has pitons that's true i'm thinking to get across though so we're not just like hanging on to both ropes maybe we can use something as like a zip line or a, a oh, to base to Speedy kind of like. scoot across it, maybe Nerida, maybe you can hoist Welgwyn up while she hammers in the pitons. Hoist yeah, no away. problem. All right, so I'll if you do one rope high, bend one down rope and let her on my shoulders. Then you can like walk across, you know, like a sideways shuffle. That's much more secure. Than oh, that's smart. So like one of the oh yeah, one on the wall and one closer to the bottom. I like that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, and then I guess we gotta get the rope. Maybe Cora can shoot the ropes across again? Yeah. I can definitely do that. Alright, so you hop up on Nerida's shoulders, you hammer a piton in a pie, and then coil the rope around the, the piton while you're up there. Hand it down. Cora's gonna shoot it across. You do the same thing on the peg below. I want to grab it. Uh, okay, yeah, it boom, sticks into one of the, the pegs. Splinters it as it does. The second one, she shoots over at the same peg, but lower. Yeah, no problem that time. Boom, sticks right into it. I thought we were securing this to the ceiling. No. To the ceiling? We never said the ceiling. Or like the wall, not the ceiling. One to yeah, the wall like and the... one to the peg. Well, you just shot both of them into the peg. Now I gotta pull one out. Yeah, Might just pull them out. Might be broken. Just... Huh? No, I don't know. I don't know what I'm thinking. That's fine. She shot them into the peg so that they would stick into something that you could right, and I can just <laughs> easily them get. Them. Yeah. Uh, I don't have any pythons though, so maybe fire a python at me out of your bow. Uh, don't know if that'll work. We could try, or we could try just throwing it. Does anybody uh, strong want to huck a python across? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure Nerida is up to that challenge. Yeah, sure. I'll try. 
We have a bunch, right? So take a piton from Welgwyn and throw it across. Uh, just roll a dex check to catch it. She throws it perfectly squarely at you in this sort of wide arc. Uh-oh. Oh. It's very easy to catch. Catch it in a single motion. How are you going to get up high to secure it? Can I climb on this post? You can climb on the post. You're over here, by the way. You can climb on this yeah, post. There's no post over here. I can't see a post over here. Oh, okay. Well, there is a post okay. there. Can I climb on that post then? I want to climb on the post. Yes. Uh, roll <clears throat> athletics what? to be sure of your footing. Hey, hey pretty damn good. Pretty so damn. it's pretty challenging to stand on this post while hammering a piton into the wall because you can't brace yourself with your hand. You have to like hold the piton and hammer it in. Well, once you get it started, you can just jump and whack. Once you get it started, whack, you, know? you can you can jump and whack, as they say. <laughs> and you manage to get it in, and then you jump up there and secure the rope around it. So now you have like an overhand and underfoot rope stretching across the gap. I did it. Let's hope his snake doesn't break it when he rips out of the water to eat the first one that crosses. Let's see. Hopefully this reveals some stuff. Can you see that? I can. There's a door right there. Am I? Are there walls here or no? There are walls. Yes. Okay. The walls are invisible, but that's fine. It's, we'll live. Uh, that better? No. Now I see walls over here. Eh, that's fine. Just corner walls. You can that's enter right. the door if you like. There isn't really enough space on this platform if someone else comes over i would not like until people get closer i would not like to enter the all right door. who's going across first i'll go all right we're doing an athletics check for narada so, something tells me this is not the mercy route <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it still feels pretty merciful you climb across with ease um having the foot rope and a hand hold rope makes this much easier. As you arrive mm -hmm. here, you're like, we need space. Alec, what right. the heck? I'm, I'm going to go through. <laughs> Let's do this. I want to try to open the door. All right. And it explodes. Open the door and it explodes. You, <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> you open the door the and enter the next room. Hopefully you're not hidden forever now. I am not visible to myself. Here is this wall. Do you see that? I don't see that wall either. Weird. Oh, I see that. Yeah, it's very strange. Well, there's a wall there. Okay. I am visible to myself, though, now. Nerida, you make it across. No problem. You want to enter that room as well? So um, I want to keep an eye right. on the others in case the skeleton snake starts. All right, who's going next? He always tries to murder all my friends. I'll go across. I'm close by. Roll athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics. <clears throat> yeah, I guess we'll just go in this order. Right. Makes sense. <laughs> that is a 16. All right. You find it very easy to make your way across this rope hold. But as you reach here, Oh, I don't think that hits. This enormous, once again, bone snake lunges out of the depths below, <laughs> snaps around at you. Actually, it should have advantage, huh? Because it's unseen. Well, is very sneaky. Oh, so. she put matter. you're too hey. quick. Fuck you, and bone you snake. Leap to the side. No problem. But it snake is now just didn't like itself. me, I guess. <laughs> I'm not this cute enough for like the snake. <laughs> <laughs> so there's not quite enough room on this platform for both of you. I'll tell Welgwen to scoot past me. All right. Can stay okay. And watch everyone. You get some room past her. The door is open. Oh, and Bone Snack is slow. So it's Welgwen's turn. Um, okay, I'm going to shoot at the... Uh, I'm going to try to hide inside the door before I 
shoot at the bone snake. If I okay. hide like off the right there. And... Yep. Okay, so that is. I don't have advantage because I definitely used. Still. You're very hidden. Okay, and then I'm going to shoot at bone snake. That'll hit. Uh, yep, yeah, cool. The arrow. Right through the passageway, darts past Narada just over her shoulder. <laughs> Cracks into the snake creature. Cool. Uh, what's the bonus damage on that? Um, D6 plus... Three. So 23. All right. 23 points of damage. What am I thinking? Just cracks, chips off bones, scatters throughout the uh, the room here. That brings us to Lost. I mean, mm. I assume you heard people yelling about another bone snake. Yeah. Let's see, what can I even do? Hmm. Why don't the why doesn't the Meyer attack the bone snake? The bones. Because the bone snake feeds the mire. Oh, hey, wait, was Narita readying another attack? Because it seems like something she might have done. That's true. She was sitting there watching, waiting for that. That's true. Uh, let's take an attack. I can hear Kailani just absolutely squealing her dumb head off, so that'll hit. What is it, D10 plus D8, I think? Yeah, that's correct. The D8 is thunder. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Uh, and plus five? Yeah, because I yeah. have the plus one. All right, you cleave down into this snake and poof, blast of thunder as you strike. Terrifying noise for real good damage. Hooray! Shattering and cleaving bone. Yeah, there really isn't a whole lot I can do right now. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna. You can just pass. I think I'm. Yeah, I think I am just gonna pass. That brings us to Cora. Don't worry, everyone. I've got this. Did she hide? Cora got vaguely British all of this. Just gonna shoot. <laughs> Lose two arrows. Very Britishly. Yeah, Those will Cora both is, hit. Like, British adjacent most of the time. No sneak attack, but it's already damaged, so. Oh my god, just gonna fucking annihilate it. 15. Second one. It's gonna kill it, guaranteed. I don't think it even matters what it is. All right, similar to the last snake, the, the arrows just poof, shatter it. It's splintering bone shards all throughout. It Its vertebrae sort of disconnect and scatter apart and plunge down into the mire. Ah, no problem at all. Shall I come over? Oh yeah, girl. Starts. Halflings versus bone snakes. Making her way. Oh, Cora just like doesn't even use the foothold, just hand over hands the rope. Lightning speed. And darts past Nerida into this chamber. Alright. Arali is very nervous. Um, here. 
Here it goes. Be brave. <laughs> the encouragement of her new compatriots and the foothold making it much easier allows her to get through without much trouble at all. Lost? Yep, I I will uh I'll go Oof. ahead and cross. I'm gonna push him before he goes now. <laughs> it's what a ath uh, athletics check. Tougher than the alleyways of Thaura. That's a twenty two. Jesus. With a slight shove from your tiefling companion. <laughs> you easily make it across. Oh, oh. Nerd is there to catch you on the other side. Now I'm waiting for a chance. I'm gonna yeah, watch. watch chance. <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it! Having been the big hero last time, yeah. Let me being the princess this time. Get over here and oh, oh shit! Here. Nice. <laughs> That's oh, a chancy. You make it not far at all before pff, your foot slips, and it. Plunges into the mire momentarily. Roll another athletics check. Let's see if you can pull yourself out. 17. You do manage to wrench your foot back out, swinging around on the ropes as you go. That was a close one. Jeez Louise. Make another really? athletics check to try to get across. So grabby. Damn it, it's a 10. Uh, 10? So you're shakily making your way. It's working out mostly. You slip a bit, but catch yourself. Sort of holding on for dear life. Roll another athletics check. Okay, okay. It's all good, man. It's all fine. We're super fine. It's got the rope. It's all good. It's cool. Everything's fine. There we go. Everything's Point great. Point. You easily make the rest of the way across. Who? Who? Oh, I was I wasn't afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. You all find yourself in this chamber. Having made it through the gauntlet, I think that's a good place to take our break. Uh, we'll take a 10-minute break. We'll come back at 6.03 p.m. See you in just a bit. And we are back. Yeah, Simba always perpetually wrong about that one point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're going to die real quick because it's not a good point. Uh, okay, so you've made it through the, the merciful section of the Serpent's Bite Temple. The doorway opens into a larger room, still choked by the sour smell that's now cloaked this entire structure, but otherwise a nice respite from some of the narrow passageways of late. Commanding enormous presence towards the center of the room is a stone structure, perhaps a throne or large shrine or sculpture. It has small steps leading up to its center. Beside the structure on the floor is another urn, as you've seen before. Bits of bone lie strewn about the, the one area on the floor, laden with rusty plate armor and a shattered sword. Raleigh Can looks I? around. Whoa. More of this? <sighs> I thought we'd be at the end by now. This can't be the first, end, right? First, first time in a dungeon for you? <laughs> well, yes. Yeah, like they're kind of like this. The bones. thought this was a temple, not a dungeon. Well... You know, you know, yeah, temple dungeon, cave dungeon, it all blends together. It's yeah, dungeon. through many uh, temples before, and these bones <clears throat> don't bode well, considering we keep finding them from room to room. Other adventurers have tried, but uh, not succeeded in making it out alive before us. Yes, well, I had read many tales of adventuring parties, exploration parties, anthropologists coming here. None having returned who actually managed to enter the temple. Uh, well, looks like we found somebody. A few somebodies. Yeah. Wonder um, how he got past the endless snakes room. 
It wasn't the only way we could have gone, apparently. She gestures towards the other door at the far end of the chamber. No, no, no. The endless snake's room. Oh, not water yes. Snakes rooms. Perhaps he never pulled that lever. Um, let's open the door at the other end of the room. What's in What's in there? All right. You walk over. And open the door at the other end. And... It opens into a small section of hallway, which quickly turns left. There's no pits. There is... There are no apparent pits of any kind. Guys, do we want to go down there and see if it just goes straight to the end with, like, nothing? I think Um, if we go down there and it's literally a straight shot back to the other room where we started, I will lose my mind. (laughs) Yeah, I... I, um, You guys go. I mean, you know, whoever wants to go with Ellie, go ahead. I, I'm just gonna sit here. I need. I need a minute. That I, those bone snakes, took it out of me. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here too and think about dry land. I'd like to check out this throne situation. See what you its deal is. Move forward and examine the throne. Slightly worn, or quote-unquote thrown, slightly worn and broken in places, this sculpture is far from the glory of its creation. Despite this, a clear imprint of a hand is impressed in the nearest surface facing you after you walk up the stairs. The rest of it is somewhat innocuous. There don't appear to be any sculptures of any kind, large slabs of stone in different shapes. Is it literally just like a handprint sunk into the rock, or does it look like there's a plate underneath it or anything? It looks like a handprint sunk into the single slab of stone that adorns the front after you mm. climb the stairs. I feel like someone should put their hand there, but it's not going to be me. Elik, are you heading down this <laughs> other passageway? Not even with uh, your I'm fancy just, gloves? Yeah, you know what? Why not? Especially not with my fancy gloves. Is anyone following him? I want to be looking for traps. Okay. Fair Go ahead and roll a perception. Oh, wait, you said the hallway went left. Well, stand in the doorway and watch him, but I will not pursue him. Oops, that's not. Cora, there we go. I keep him in the eyes. Rounding the corner here. What do I see when I get to the corner? Yeah. Oh, that's a 15. Uh, you see that the hallway continues. It expands slightly. Turns to the right. Are we supposed to actually be able to see it? Because I can't see anything right now. Can't see anything? I can't see anything either. How about now? Nope. Nope. Negative. Nope. All right, I will just reveal all of this. Can you see this? I can, I can see, see those this. four tiles. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Hmm. Always my favorite. How about that? Did that work? Nope, that made no change. Ugh. Well, it's not just a straight hallway, right? It's like a room that expands out. It's clearly not just... It turns to the right, and then the hallway continues. It expands out and is maybe 10 feet across. Sort of curves a bit to the right. Okay. Um, It seems like trappy. I don't know about you. That's all I'm going to go then. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like a plain hallway that just went, you know, boop, boop, boop. Right back there. Okay, so when you get here, you notice it curves around to the right. If you peer around the corner, it seems to turn right again towards the end. Okay. I mean, use your organ senses to tell anything about whether or not it leads back or. It's only for stonework, like. History, basically, of stone. And like how far underground you are, and if there's an incline, right? No, nothing like that. that. But we know about how far underground we are. Yeah. Okay. You're probably about 30 feet underground, though 
the mire makes it difficult to even determine what ground level is. Uh, can I check out the body to see if we can see any like uh, any obvious way it died? Sure, it's a pile of bones uh, with some very rusty and old looking plate armor adorned on it. You can roll investigation to see if you can find out how it died. Yeah, let's see what I can do. Come on. Oh, great. That's <laughs> four. I'm the smart <laughs> sorcerer. You can't really tell anything. It's a pile of bones covered in weird armor. First of bones. I do not have a good investigation for that. Problem. Hey, guys, there's the body here. Did you did you see it? Does it have hands? Yes, surprisingly. Why do you ask? Uh, I mean, it have doesn't have noticeable hands. Everything is sort of... There are lots of bones strewn about. Okay. Hmm. So you're lying, Chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does it have a head? There's a skull with a mandible sort of detached from it, resting alongside. Oh, but we got the parts. <laughs> Merida, can you tell if anything seems magical about this uh, handprint here? Oh, I mean, I might not be the best person to ask, but I could try to take a look. Does Chance know more about magic? Chance <laughs> does not. <laughs> I'm okay. I can tell you uh, more about circuses than I can you do about magic. Unfortunately, I don't know a lot either, but I could try. Yeah, give it a look. Oh, well, maybe if we both try together. Well, I guess we're not proficient, so. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Arali. All right. Mm. Oh, guidance. The pages sir? of her notebook as well. Cast guidance on her. Uh, roll wisdom just to make sure you can. Do, 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 do. Can you do it? Yep. Yeah. You can reach out to Umberly. It's not terribly difficult. You manage it. Getting used to pushing through the veil. Let's see. Um, it's a little hard to tell. It might be magical. Mm. It looks like it would fit one of our hands if we do you want to give it a try i learned my lesson about touching random stuff in an uncomfortable Sorry, did way it, did it say um that like somebody pure should do it again basically sorry i was a little distracted somebody pure i don't know what you're talking about no he we haven't had any to the, uh, sorry the I, like i missed the description of this thing i guess like what did the inscription say there is no inscription here at all Okay, sorry. So you I'm didn't miss feeling... it. <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. It's perfectly it's reasonable to think there was one. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, what about what about that? She gestures down at the urn on the ground. Hmm. I'll go over and check it out. Is there anything on it? It looks very similar to the urns you discovered in the previous chamber with the scales. Okay. I um, you think take... it's sticks? What's in it? What's in it? Is there like a hand? What does the top of it look like? Is there like a little handle that you could like poke something through and lift up? Or would you have to like lift a, <clears throat> like a knob? A, there's just a normal sort of knob top that you could grab and lift. With my uh, medicine skill and mending, would I be able to make the hand on the corpse better at all? <laughs> <laughs> not mending no no. <laughs> you cannot weave flesh know. with mending and medicine I think um, you would need, like, necromancy some some crazy necromancy would be required <laughs> you assume to create I, flesh I will open the urn alright pop the lid off the urn Lift. spring snakes <laughs> shoot everywhere <laughs> lifting the lid a jack-in-the-box <laughs> lifting the lid reveals a collection of fine long thin objects at the bottom 
What do they look like? It's Fine, like what long I and thin. <laughs> okay. You could examine them more closely. Yeah, perhaps I'll put take a look at them. Maybe I'm going to dump them out. I'm not interested okay. in putting my hand into this. <laughs> Lift the urn. It is somewhat heavy and oxidized and rough. You overturn the urn and poof, they spill out onto the floor. They are white in color. Are they bones? Are they finger bones? They seem like they might be bones. Oh, guys, I think they these are finger bones. They don't seem like they might be finger bones, but you're not that there's, medically knowledgeable. They're snake bones. Isn't um, someone here trained in medicine? Uh, survival uh, to see what they are. Uh, yeah, you can roll survival if you think that would help. Or nature, I would say. Lost is nature. Well, I, I'm, have I have nature medicine and survival to help whichever check it is. <laughs> Guardian of nature? I have, I have uh, survival with you. I have okay. nature. What would you like um, so to do? I, guess I am going to roll survival. Uh, if you want, if you want, you can roll Can I help with survival that. as well? Um, Are you proficient? Yes. These look like animal bones, so you think a nature... Someone who's more knowledgeable in nature would have a better understanding of what these are. Well, then I guess I will roll for it. Can I also give loss advantage with my nature? As yes. Boop, boop. Come on, dice. Cooperate. God damn it. Uh, it's still a 14. Okay. I believe that I, what, I have seen bones like this on animals, but I'm not positive. Lost, you dig through the bones a bit, sort them out. They do seem to be snake bones. There is a full set of snake bones for perhaps a three foot long snake, including fangs indicative of a venomous snake of some kind. Uh, yeah, so looks like we've got an entire snake. Interesting. Are going to come alive and attack us like those other bone snakes? Perhaps we should separate the bones out a bit, just in case. Take its teeth away. Let's put its teeth in a different corner. <laughs> in fact, I will take those. Do they have any venom left? No. Uh, the, the skeleton is thoroughly desiccated. And did the bone snakes have any that we passed earlier in Venom, or they were just big bones. They definitely poisoned uh, Lost when they bit him. You I wouldn't be able to grab the to corpses because snake, the corpses snake. fell into a lake that was full of crazy weeds that tried oh, to drown okay. you. So, no. And I oh, lit one of them on fire. Oh, this reminds me. There's something like this in my notes. Alari flips through the pages of her notebook furiously. Uh, here, um, the priests of the inner cloister had a dangerous ritual that some didn't survive. I wasn't able to find out what the ritual was exactly, but the priests thought that a serpent's touch would sanctify their blood, and only those with a blessing could receive the serpent's wisdom. I'm, I'm not sure if that helps. They chose Maybe lost to get touch it since he got bitten by the snake. Yeah. Lost Seems likely. Oh, that's enough. true. What the hell? Uh, yeah, so I uh, guess I'll... Go ahead and throw yourself on the sacrificial altar. It's fine. It'll work. I, I, it's not a sacrificial altar. It's just a plate with a handprint on it. But um, yeah, I, uh, I'll i go ahead and... Uh, yeah, with the hand that got bitten before... The hand that got bitten. So you were bitten. Yeah. And how was poison, I, I, yeah, I, of course, threw you. But yeah. you were not poisoned. You just took poison damage. Oh, that's true. Well, I, I could uh, prick myself with one of the fangs. Get those back, Cora. Yeah, I, well, I, I, whether or not uh, this serpent skeleton has any venom left, I have... Uh, quite a few ways to poison you if necessary. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. I think I, we're um, trying to 
trying to contemplate what this ritual might be. I brought um, some anti-venom, too. I have two vials. I haven't needed to use it yet, so we can cure you after you do whatever you need to do with the ritual. Uh, it seems like a certain touch would either be very literal, and you would need to uh, have a serpent with you, or the more figurative sense, uh, the only thing that generally would stick around is the poison. So whether or not you were, well, you never it never affected you, perhaps it is still in your blood. Well, yeah, that's why I'm contemplating piercing, like pricking my finger with a, one of those fangs but, before but placing wait. my hand down. What? But wait, before before you do that, okay, I've I've got it. I've got a bad, good idea, I think. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. These priests used these snakes to poison themselves. We've seen the snakes they use. You've been bitten by them. Why don't you turn into one and bite one of us? Instead. <laughs> um, I, I mean, knew I liked Chance the most out of all of you, but that, <laughs> that just sealed it. <laughs> Uh, well, that's insane. Um, but I kind of dig it. Uh, I will say that if we're, if, if I, 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 the, the, the last couple of wild shapes I had to take really took it out of me. So if we're going to, if we want to try that plan, which I'm more than happy to, cause yes, you're right. I've seen these snakes a few times now. Um, we gotta, we gotta, we have to take another short rest. What would the party like to do? I, I guess I'll throw myself out there either way, but whether it's me turning into a snake or simply resting my hand on this altar. Well, we could try resting the hand on the altar first and seeing if it does anything, and then if it doesn't no, do anything, we rest, and then we... <laughs> do the poison thing first. I mean, might be worth a try. Uh, but we have also seen that there are traps and repercussions for doing things wrong so yeah well sure without the proper uh with the proper effect in place may be detrimental to all well that sounds reasonable it was your idea i think that makes you the uh, prime volunteer (laughs) otherwise ali he has let's do this i like cora a little bit too I am Go on, Lost. It was your idea. All dwarves, so very hearty folk. <laughs> Thanks, Cora. I, I'm I, fine. You fine, and I'll just place my hand on the on the plate. Okay. You go up, place your hand right on the imprint of the hand. Mm-hmm. As you do, this piercing feeling engulfs your hand, as if something has stabbed you. Nice. And then what? You take what four you points of piercing damage, and then it subsides. Creep, you just kept your hand there? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Blood may trigger it or something. Okay, Drawing well, your hand happened. away, there are little Ouch. streaks of blood left on the, on the altar. Did anything. Nothing else appears to be moving. Raleigh's looking around excitedly. Like, can I inspect my wounds? Like, you know, where, 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 where was I pierced? You inspect your hand, and there are four marks in sort of a square shape on your hand, as if they'd been pierced with needles. Hmm. Your hand turns a bit pale as well. I think you've got to be poisoned. Sounds like it. Well, something... Something bad (laughs) is happening, for sure. But, uh... I don't know. Now, hold your hand out in front of you and circle around all the walls. Perhaps it will react to your... uh, What? Your, Your new condition. My my, I see. So you you think that this is me giving myself up to the uh, the serpent's bite? Um. Well, 
it's uh, worth a thought uh, since you did get a quote unquote bite, uh, perhaps uh, again poisoned or being poisoned when you're doing it will cause the mechanism in the machine to react. Uh, but as we don't really know either way, uh, and you are have given yourself up to a bite, it's worth uh, trying to explore the room uh, again with your newly found condition. Fair enough. I'd well, like to uh, stabbed again. <laughs> I'd like to investigate the room. All right, you walk around the room, holding your torch aloft. I assume. Yep. No new information seems to reveal itself to you. The walls are okay. stone. The urn uh, lies overturned on the ground with a small assemblage of snake bones, sans fangs. There's a skeleton with some blade armor and a shattered sword. And can I reinspect the uh, altar thingy? There's a bit of dried blood on the handprint. Inspecting the altar reveals nothing new. Um, and after that much time, he isn't taking any poison or nothing. Uh, you feel normal. Other than your hand hurts a little bit. Yeah. All right. So we want to try someone who is poisoned, or would you prefer to transform into a snake and bite someone? I'm fine either way at this point. Well, it sounds like um, might be a while before he can transform again. You said you had some venom, Cora? Some poison we can use? I don't think I have any snake venom specifically, however. I'm not sure if that's important or not. Um, and you think it's worth a try? Well... Uh, I actually am starting to enjoy uh, Chance's idea more because you do have to adorn yourself in the serpent. I think we should have Lot uh, bite and uh, well, someone can wear him while they're putting their hand on the altar. <laughs> well, there was nothing about adorning oh, wow. yourself with a serpent necessarily. The, the priests thought that the serpent's touch would sanctify their blood. It could be that you wear them, but... To me, that sounds like it added something to your blood, as in it, their venom mixed with your blood. Indeed. Um, in that case, I, I do have venom, but uh, nothing that is snake venom specifically. Well, I've got another plan, Cora. What if you inject yourself with your venom and I'll get bitten by lost. We'll all do this together. We'll, we'll just try every solution we have and we should probably try one at a time. There, please. <laughs> I'm gonna just go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead while everyone is debating on what we're gonna and just roll around on the floor. <laughs> no, and, uh, and, and I'm gonna start taking a short rest. Um, well, Chance, again, uh, because these are your ideas, I feel like that makes you the prime volunteer. <laughs> uh, however, uh, the, what Nerida said, and one at a time, I believe it was Nerida, um, one at a time makes the most sense. After all, we only have, uh, if Alari is willing to share, two vials of anti-venom, and it would be a waste to waste them all. All right, so I'm resistant to poison. I will let you inject me with poison because I don't think it's going to be smart enough to discern different types of snake venom. And don't Let's you just, just not get poison? Well, um, yeah, magic. but they, they might not have either, you know? If they and were blessed by whatever. If it's you have it in your, in your it bloodstream. In your veins. But, yeah, it'd still be in my veins. I'm just not poisoned. Um, if that was the case, I would have thought that lost who had already been bitten. Lost, and, got uh, bit, and took poison damage, but wasn't poisoned. Exactly. So if you are, are injected and do not get poisoned, I do not know if it will work in the same way as he's already tried the mechanism. Well, how much I, venom do you have? We could try. 
what I mean is that the poison that infected Loss was like just uh, like maybe like a local necrotizing agent that immediately did damage and didn't actually try to poison someone. So if you have a poison that would poison someone... Yeah, there are poisons have... that sort of do quick local damage and then poisons that are longer lasting, that are disorienting. So we need one of those. One spider venom pack and I have three quick apply vials of assassin poison. Do you have any poisons that to, to break the, the wall, apply the poison's effect to people. I that mean, apply a lasting poison effect. Uh, I, I have one spider venom sack and I have three quick apply vials of assassin's poison. Uh, we didn't really talk about specifically what the assassin's poison I would say for this purpose, you could use any of them to apply the poison effect. Your, your sort of understanding of nature means that like you could apply it in a way that it would be longer lasting or shorter lasting <laughs> survival no need survival, to yeah. <laughs> cool inject it near the hand region so that it's you know more in my my hand blood yeah yeah perhaps i will leave a little bit uh, on the outside just to help it yeah smear a little around and then maybe we'll fool it indeed uh, so i guess i will all take one of the quick apply vials and go ahead and uh, do that. Nerida, you know a lot about medicine. Should I drink a lot of liquor first so my kidneys don't filter the venom out as quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a good idea? Hashtag science. Uh, do I know about this? Do I know that's a good idea? That, that doesn't make any <laughs> damn sense. <laughs> well, like, that doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> there we go. Can I anyways? <laughs> You can do whatever you want, I suppose. Yes. I mean, there's so much booze running through my system at any given time. <laughs> I don't think that would necessarily make a difference, but That's probably you want an excuse to take a drink. I respect that choice. <laughs> drink some liquor. Cora carefully uh, threads a needle with a significant amount of venom. It's like, are you ready? <laughs> Stabs it into your wrist. Do it. Smears some over your palm. You, within seconds, you feel woozy, dizzy, a bit disoriented. I've been meaning to talk to you guys right. about your substance abuse problems. Then I'm <laughs> Raleigh take my hand guides you me. over <laughs> to the monolith, and guides your hand to the point. Um. So you feel like a just a little nip, not even like a bee sting on your hand. And as you press your hand against the stone, you realize it feels a little numb. The gentle sting subsides. And as you withdraw your hand from the stone, which by the way, you take three points of piercing damage. As you withdraw your hands from the stone, you notice the imprint mm, hums to life with a faint green glow. In mere seconds, the glow grows brightly enough to shine across the entire room. The statue quakes and groans and begins to slide backwards towards the far wall. Settles in place. <laughs> Revealed beneath the retreating stone is a staircase, which leads downwards. Arali hands you a vial of anti-venom. <laughs> um, Thank you for acting as our uh, guinea pig, Ali. I, I know that you're noble, but I do appreciate the gesture. What? Here, drink this. You'll feel better. Is liquor? Um, yes. Mm. <laughs> That was the right answer. <laughs> you drink it, and it is sour and terrible in flavor. Bad liquor. Oh, <laughs> I don't like that at all. But within 10 or 20 seconds, you feel your consciousness returning. You feel more level-headed. Quite the opposite of being drunk. So the venom is neutralized. 
How big is his hand now, though? <laughs> Same size. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger hand. Carl, your hands. Yeah, I know they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take some take a nap and then I'm gonna call some doctors. Okay. <laughs> so we head down the stairs. Yep. We've gotta be closing in on the end now, right? I'm gonna get this treasure and get out of here. Come on, you're yeah. not having fun yet? Like we found a I mean, dead guy here, a secret underground tunnel. This, this was a bit. Expected. This was a bit fun. The uh, the water portion of this adventure was less fun. Oh yeah, that part where you almost oh, died. Oh, fine. If you get in danger, you just cast a bubble around yourself and float away. Does anyone have a bubble spell, Allie? Allie has it. Yeah, Allie does. Just, he did yeah, it. That's what I did just to save leak. myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we descending the stairs? Let's do it. Yay. Who's first? Not me. Uh, oh, I want to go down first. I'll go right behind Chance. I'll go with him. Behind a week. Okay. Oh. Perhaps we should uh, stealthily ascend or descend. What? <laughs> <laughs> you yell. <laughs> it echoes throughout the coming, the upcoming room. The chamber below is simple stone and sizable. Many bones dress the floor, desiccated and crumbling. In the center of the room is something strange. A coiled, scaly rope, but with a preposterous diameter of perhaps four or five feet. It pulses and undulates as it slides along itself. Rising above it, nearly to the roof of this cavernous space, you see the serpent's long neck peek into a strange and slightly calming humanoid face flanked by scaly frills. It peers down at your party with wide eyes. Greetings, followers of Poloz. I have not yet met you. I am Donthu, and I guard his wisdom. You are the first of his followers to enter this chamber for many revolutions. Why have the visitations ceased? I'm gonna grab Alik and cover his mouth before he has an opportunity to tell this this fucking thing that we actually serve Helm. <laughs> I feel like all the death traps may be why the visitations have ceased. Ah, yes. They are to weed out robbers. Well, that's not us. We're absolutely not here to rob. Yeah, we would never do that. We're here because we love... Pelos. <laughs> ah, yes. Glory to Pelos. Speak his guidance, and the wisdom you seek shall be granted. And now let's all just look at Orali and hope that she has something in that <laughs> journal of hers. It's being humble and something else. Orali just looks terrified and opens her journal, is peering up at this enormous serpent before you, flipping through pages. Um, uh, Pelos says, um, be good and humble. The serpent peers back down at you and scowls a bit. Not quite that. right, child. What sect of Pelos worshippers are you from? Well, you know the see, you, the thing about it is, that, like you mentioned, you know we've really uh, there are not so many visitors recently because honestly, you know Pelos uh, is not as well known as he once was, which is of course a tragedy. And so we are, unfortunately, we have to be a bit more independent in our research of Pelos. And so I'm afraid we've had to do most of this, you know, putting together ourselves from ancient texts. And so I, I hope that you'll forgive us if there are some details that we are. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're reformed followers. Um, the, yeah, the original book was written in Orcish. So it's, it's, you know. It's very, you know, we're, we're, we're so passionate. That is not true. Well, the one Don't that listen we to found. him. Don't listen to anything he says. 
Do not listen if to you him. If you be not followers, then I rebuke you, dishonorable ones. No, 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 we're not not followers. We are just, um... Leave this place. And if you have any shred of dignity, tell no one of it. Any who enter this chamber seeking to steal the wisdom of Pelos will be destroyed. But if we ask nicely... Arali turns back to you, just like, We've come this far. Let's kill him. Shit, girl, you are metal. I like you. <laughs> now I'll, I'll, I'll let go of, with that, I'll let go <laughs> of The Ali. glory of hell. We were- <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Pelos, be damned. The Can fire. you guys all see this? No. No. Oh, oh God. This is a disaster. All right, <laughs> oh, maybe we can see that. Hmm. Oh, what a creepy snake! <laughs> Isn't it? It's got like a weird. Look at can you see face. anything? I don't I don't look like at his face. <laughs> anything over here? Oh no! Nothing over there. Oh, I don't Let like me it. Try this because it'll refresh everything. Let me just quickly save. He looks like Willem oh, Dafoe. Okay. <laughs> it's great, right? I love it. I think if Willem Dafoe was a snake man. Is Willem Dafoe a snake man? He might actually be. Might, it might be, it yeah. I want you to check that out. Can neither confirm nor deny. But actually, oh, it's still going. <clears throat> oop Now, I think we can see it. Yes. Oh, good. This part is just deleted for some reason. Okay, whatever. All right. You stand before the guardian serpent of Pelos, and battle is nigh. <laughs> Why did I have to say I was going? It is music should start to play in a moment, hopefully. There we go. Let's see, Ali, you can be here. As Lost is just barely restraining you from shouting <laughs> the glory of Helm. Glory. Glory of Helm. Top of the round is Chance. Boy. I have rolled uh, the bottom of the round every time. <laughs> it's rough. Okay. Walgwen actually got a worse roll than you, but she has a better dex. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Front with my boy. All right. Oh God, I have such little to do now. Shit. Ah, uh, God. I'm just gonna try and disengage and walk away. Okay, you can. <laughs> yeah. As far away as I can go. Hardly anywhere to go. All right, that brings us to Narada. Oh, you're also muted. Okay, sorry. So, how big is this room? Uh, it looks like to be 30. Ceiling? The ceiling is 25 feet tall. Okay. Um, the serpent stretches nearly to the top of it yeah. while still coils. Hold on, I need to look up my spell again, but I think I'm going to cast the Destructive Wrath. Destructive Wrath. Well, it sounds good. It does. With a. I think that's what it's called, sorry. 
Destructive wave? It's my level five, uh, Claire. Destructive wave, yeah. With a channel it's divinity. It's range, self, 30 foot radius, strike the ground, creating a burst of divine energy that ripples outward from you. Each creature you choose within 30 feet must succeed on a con save or take 5d6 thunder, as well as 5d6 radiant. Or be knocked, and be knocked prone. So it takes all the thunder. And then oh, you're roll doing for channel divinity. Okay, so you're casting destructive yeah. wave. Let's make sure you yeah. can. Yes, you reach out to Umberly and Ooh, channel the destructive <laughs> power of nature, summoning forth a destructive wave of radiant and thunderous force, shattering the anyone's ears in the area. Uh, but also damaging this enormous snake before you. So let's see, it's... Uh, so all 30 thunder damage? Yeah. And 5d6 radiant. I'll also roll its save. Your DC is 17, I think? Um, I believe so. Whatever the max it can be is so at this con point. Con save. Oh, it fails the con save. That's a close one, though. <laughs> um, max it can be. So let's see. It should be ten plus or eight plus wisdom plus four. So that's yeah, seventeen, right? Yeah. Okay, so it fails the save. It takes all 30 thunder damage and 16 radiant damage. And is not okay. prone, but it's a snake, so... But 46 damage is nothing to balk at. Do you wish to move? Uh... I'll go, like... near a leak, I guess. Like, up front? Um... Yeah, sure. Okay. That brings us to Lost. Hmm. I am going to Let's see actually what do I want to do? Tip it, tip it. I'm gonna go ahead and summon some animals, because why okay. the hell wouldn't I? <laughs> With the staff, I think I'm gonna. You know what? I'll go ahead and go with the old classic. I'll do a good, wolf nuke. good old fashioned wolf nuke. Wolf nuke. That's what eight wolves. It is eight. Exactly. Hey, you can perfectly surround it. Roll uh, initiative for the wolves. They'll go next turn. Wolf nuke! <laughs> oh, god damn it. Oh, well, quite bad. Yeah, I don't remember what their modifier is. Hold on, let me pull it up. I think it's no, plus no, no. two. I think you're right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, they're not actually last then. Um, still, Alec is still, still last. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Okay. Would you like to move? Uh, yeah. I'll go ahead and back back All on right. to it the wall. Will take a reaction. AO you with its bite. Perfect. Alec, would you like to defend? Too late. Um, <laughs> 12 to hit. Uh, or my sorry, AC 14 is... to hit. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, that, that hits then. 12 wouldn't have. Let's see. Make a con saving throw. In addition to your concentration save, that's well, a save. Make a con save. You take 
11 points of piercing damage. So wait, I'm That's trying to understand. That's a failed con save. I Yeah, I'm trying to understand on which way you want... What's the con save for? Uh, for a lot of poison damage you're about to take. Okay. And I'm sorry, but it is a lot. The poison courses through you. The venom courses through you for 43 points of poison damage. Uh, I am beyond down. Okay. Lost goes down and the wolves vanish. Yeah. Walked away. That bite was quite brutal. Jesus. The bite itself, not a big deal, but the poison that followed just <laughs> you dawdle around for a bit, collapse into a slump on the floor. That brings us to the great serpent's turn. Hmm. It does not like you. It's gonna stay where it is, though. Let's see. It's gonna cast Flame Strike here, oh God. which will hit everyone but Chance. So Lost, <laughs> take a death save, oh. fail a death save. Does Lost get to save against the death save since it's a- uh, Nope, it's a hit. Fire? <laughs> no, it's a hit. It also does radiant yeah. damage. Um, so everyone make a dex saving throw, except for Chance. Can you roll for me? Yes. Go. I did not save. Come on, everybody else. Let's... Mm -hmm. Good news is I have a lot of HP. It's a 14. I'm glad you do. <laughs> 14 fails. Fuck. There was no reason for Greg to roll there. Because you don't save against this. That was his death uh, save. He's not making a death save yet. No, it was an automatic fail. Just automatic fail. Okay. Cora also needs one. I'll roll for Cora. And Raleigh also needs one. Cora succeeds. Hey. Did you roll for me as well? I did. You failed. Oh, oh my god. A Raleigh crit fails, which doesn't do anything, fortunately. Uh, so that's gonna be this enormous column of fire spews down from the ceiling and engulfs all of you doing oh good eight fire damage I would like to use uncanny dodge which halves it right but that's yes. not like that just happens that's not good yeah. and 17 radiant damage Four. So 21 to Tiefling. Oh, which is only a Raleigh, right? Yep. Oof. Yeah, so 21 damage total. Not uh, nearly as bad as it could have been. Korra will take half, so Korra will take 10 points of damage. Welgwyn will take half? Uh, I will take half. And Welgwyn will take half. And yeah. then... It's going to bite. I'm going to defend. <laughs> yeah, you got to give me a bit more time. It's going to because I have bite Welgwyn. I specifically asked if you. Well, yeah, you to asked, defend. but you were like, "Do you want to defend?" Too late. And I was like, okay. "It's like it's going <laughs> to attack." Okay. Anyway, uh, twenty to hit. Oh, oh sorry, it's got disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the defense worked. Nope, 20 to hit. Jesus. No, that's gonna hit. Roll a con save. Great. Don't then. fuck it up. Don't Not die like lost it. Great thing for me. Regardless, you take 11 poison damage. I don't think okay. that's gonna save. It's, what is it? Yeah, it, it's a 12. That's all. Nope. So take 11, 11. piercing damage. 
Okay, is that it or is there more nope, coming my more. way on top of it? There's more. This will probably down you. Yeah. But I can still use poison uncanny. damage. Well, with uncanny dodge. Uncanny That's dodge uses 20. your reaction, I believe. Oh, fuck, right, and it's the same turn. Yeah, no, I'm down. Okay. All Gwen so that's collapses. 61 points total? Yes. Shit. Uh, Korra is like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, I assume she's still up. She's gonna... I can't... There's nowhere to hide. So she's just gonna bonus action hunter's mark. And then loose some arrows. Oh, people are in melee though. First one gonna hit? No, that first one misses. The second one will hit um, for Think. Let me see what Hunter's Mark does exactly. Extra d6. So 2d6, 2d8. Don't think this is a beast. No. 19. Is it plus 5? I feel like it's plus 6, but maybe I'm crazy. We'll say it's plus six. Isaac's not here. So 20 points of damage with the arrow sinks into it. Seems a bit damaged, but it's still going. That brings us to Welgwyn. Cora's gonna hop over here. I will make a death. That's one failure. Wolves no longer exist. It's Alec's turn. Oh, I don't have uh, a Raleigh up here. A Raleigh is also 14. Okay, geez, what can a Raleigh do here? Yeah. Okay. Raleigh is gonna step back as well and raise her hands actually she doesn't even need to raise her hands she shouts out this invocation this evocation and the snake bursts into flames oh I was gonna do that <laughs> just Let's see, what's its dex? Crazy good. But will that succeed? No, because she is crazy good. Wow, that was close. So this bright light fills the room. Snake takes 31 points of fire damage. All right, that brings us to Harbicure Toll Middle League. All right, I'm going to cast at level three that spell that I can't remember the name of that heals everybody. It is Mass Healing Word. So everyone okay. gets healed for. Oh, uh, let's see, actually, we've got seven targets. Chance did not get injured, I did right? Not from that. Or everyone else did. And then I'm charging, targeting, targeting everyone but chance. Uh, okay, <clears throat> let me make sure. 
Oh, I gotta roll a d20 first. It can hit everybody. Okay, range is 60 feet. 60, yeah, it's yeah, fine. it's pretty big. Uh, so that's my wisdom. I'm pretty sure it works. So everyone heals for six. Yes, Yay. that is your wisdom. Including okay, well, Gwyn and Lost, roll um, con saves. Jesus. Is that nine, nine on both of you? Nine eleven. Even, eleven for me. Eleven. Okay. Well, Gwen, you take one point of exhaustion, which means you have disadvantage on ability checks. All right. My channel divinity. Did we decide that that was a bonus action, or did we keep yes. it action? Yes. Yeah, it's bonus. If I have disadvantage on something that I would normally have advantage on, does that just even not make it normal? Yes. Advantage and disadvantage cancel each other out. Okay. All right, then, um, uh, my goodness, let's just, uh, hold on, what's, I gotta look a thing up. I've never cast it before and I wanna know if it's worthwhile. I don't know how long the resistance cantrip lasts for. If it's just one round, it's probably not even worth. Oh, it's a one minute concentration. How useless. Um, I'm just going to hit it then. I'm going to take a little swing at All it. All right, roll the hit. Wait, uh, didn't you. Question. Isn't mass healing an action? action? Okay, it's a bonus. All right, so that's nine plus six. It reflects off the snake's tough hide. Boom. Oh, that's actually plus five. But still, it reflects yeah. off the snake's stuff. Right, uh, Chance, uh, or you can move still. Yeah, I've seen that its range is ten. I want to move here so I can defend all, right. all these people. Okay, with some sorcery going on, I am going to spend seven of my sorcery points to get a fifth level slot and then because I fucking hate this goddamn snake do I burn it with regular fire or lots of small fires <laughs> Choices, choices, choices. Yeah, burn it with regular. Sorry to interrupt. Um, how much did we get from mass healing word? I don't recall. I think, I it, was think it was just six. 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 six? Okay. six yep. Sorry. All you right. can also uh, uh, tides of chaos, I believe. I used that already. Pre didn't I? Didn't we? I didn't yeah, know. actually, during the snake fight. First yes, snake fight? The first okay. one. Um, but, you know, I'm going to cast Immolation on our All right. Guardian Serpent. He's already immolated, but let's go. More Immolation. Exactly, right? <laughs> the fire rages harder. Is he going to save? What's your DC? 17. I don't think he's gonna save. Nope. <laughs> that was mighty close. Roll damage. Uh, what is it? I haven't done this one with A D yet. I think it's eight D six. Fuck you, snake. Come on. There we go. How do Twitch? I don't know, is there something you can do about that? Uh, no. Unfortunately, no. It's fine. Just All sucks. Right. All right, so, how much is that? 27? 27. All right, the fire rages higher. Uh, and because it failed, it's on double fire. That brings us to Nerida. Unless you want to move, Chance. All right. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to try to reach out. Oh, sorry. 
I'm going to try to reach out to Umberly and cast Shatter at 4th level on this All creature right. with Channel Divinity. You reach out to Umberly. The Shatter work? That should be 40 for the con save. 40 for the con save? Oh. No, sorry, 40 damage, but with a con save to fail or not. Oh, you're casting it at 3rd level? Fourth level? Fourth level. Fourth level. Okay. And with channel divinity. Yeah. So that the should save be, is a uh, 17. I have D8. So, I guess Fails I, the save. It, it succeeded. Oh, it failed? Okay. So, 40 points of damage. As this enormous thunderclap fills the air. I will stay where I am. It reels around and looks quite woozy. Uh, lost. Okay, I'm gonna back into this corner. And I am going to, let's see what, what's worthwhile. Yeah, I'm gonna cast uh, fourth level Cure Wounds on myself. All right. So that's 3d8 heal? 4, 4d8 plus 3. 4d8. Uh, so 24. 24 points. Healing light of Mulekey flows through you. You feel a bit yeah. better. Your wounds close a bit. That is all I'm going to do this turn. All right. Serpent turn. Hmm. Oh, that's so close. Vent. <laughs> Announcing it now. Hmm. Okay, it is going to... slither around and bark some strange language. Let's see... It's what... And its wounds seem to close pretty significantly. Uh. It's still coiled up in the center of the room. Hmm. It's going to snap out. Actually, wait. Okay, it's going to attack a leak with its bite. 25 to hit. <laughs> yep. But fortunately for me... Roll a constitution save. Fortunately for me... I don't think you get advantage on that. Oh, I do get advantage. It's a poison? Save against poison, right? It's, it's not a save against being poisoned, it's just poison damage. So you'll take yeah, half damage from the poison, but you don't get a save against, for the con, you don't get a bonus. I don't bonus. know that that matters. But let me see. No, you have advantage on saving against being poisoned. Saving throws against poison, it says. Not against being poisoned, just all kinds of poison. uh but this is well no this is poison damage not the poison effect 
So I'm going to say you don't you get advantage against... on the saving throw. So hold you take half on. damage, though. You can't you can't have advantage on the save and take half damage. Like, that's nuts. Sure you can. <laughs> but okay, it's fine. We'll move I on. think it's against being poisoned, like the poisoned condition. Uh, so take 12 points of piercing. And 25 points of poison damage. Ow. You still up? Oh, yeah. Fine. Okay. Korra's turn. This horrible fiend snake. Gonna just launch some more arrows. Is in melee, so she gets sneak attack. Those will both hit. Um, 2d8 plus d6 on the first. Actually, plus 2d6 from Hunter's Mark. It's 19, uh, 22. And then just a d8 and d6 on the second one. Oh, not bad. 16. It's pretty ragged. It's almost done. Can someone finish it off? Oh, I forgot. On its turn, it takes a bunch of fire damage. That's right. Potentially. It has to save twice. What's your DC chance? 17. It saves both times, and the flames are extinguished. It's pretty sure it does deck save. Yeah, it definitely saves both times. Okay, Raleigh. Hmm. All right. Take a bit of a chance. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> she runs forward and grabs onto the snake, channeling some magical energy into it. Actually, she can do this from afar. She's going to stay back here and do it. A ghostly skeletal hand appears over the snake. It's got a pretty good mod. But that will not hit. It swipes at the snake, but it just shrugs it off. Um, okay. I tried. Sorry. Well, Gwen. Uh, okay, I'm going to hide behind Narada. All right, roll um, to hide. Ooh, that's a 10. Don't feel too hidden. All right, well, that's fine. Um, I'm going to shoot at that big boy with my right. turbo. Roll to hit. That is going to be, I think, a 20 to hit. Let me just double check. Yeah, well, it's either a 19 or 20, so that yeah, hits. Yeah, it's a 20. Cool. And then that's just 1d6 plus 3, but... Uh, do you get sneak attack because Narada's threatening, I believe? Oh! Go ahead and roll your 5d6. No, you're right. Sweet. Face taking a dying snake. That's going to be 14 plus 3, so 17 points. How do you want to do this? Yes! Uh, I want to shoot it right in its neck, and I want its head to pop off. <laughs> All right. You quickly take aim after you attempt to dive behind Nerida and hide from it. It sticks in the snake's neck. It's reeling around, just coughing and sputtering blood. Bits of venom seeping from its fangs. You whip out another arrow, right in the side. Its head sort of like 
droops a bit. You quickly draw another arrow, loose, thunk. This time it severs the last bit of flesh and its creepy, weird humanoid head thunk, falls to the ground. The snake body like twirls for a bit and flails wildly, uh, just sort of slapping out around the cavernous space before settling to the ground below. Oh boy. That thing was lethal. There better be some awesome treasure <laughs> inside this. <laughs> I almost died. You're not the only one. That was quite harrowing. As the body of the snake relaxes and slumps down onto the ground, it reveals what it was coiled around this entire time. Change the music slightly. <laughs> An enormous chalice carved of stone stands immaculate in the center of this hollow chamber. The four serpents climb it, its cardinal sides, bow away from it and then back, kissing the lip before bending outwards again and upon themselves bearing their faces to the viewer. Their scales and faces are carved with enormous care they almost seem to have been alive, but frozen in place and turned to stone. Mm. Whew. It's the hardest fight I've ever had. Um, what's this? I seem to be guarding it. I don't know. Is there any liquid in it? Leaning over the edge of the chalice and peering inside, the bottom seems much closer than you expected, having viewed it from the side, resting only about 10 inches from the lip. In the stone floor of the cup is a fine groove curled upon itself. It invites closer inspection. Ooh, I want to inspect it. <laughs> you get turned into a face on a snake chalice. <laughs> Roll perception. Raleigh holds her torch over it, looks inside as you lean in closer. Taking a closer look at the strange groove in the center of the chalice's bottom, you notice yet finer grooves within it that seem patterned as though they were scales. You also notice that the shape itself loops back upon itself, but does not seem or but does seem to come to a head at one end, with two divots where eyes might be. You also notice a very fine seam which splits the base into two equal parts beneath the, the carving. Hmm. I think I've got another slot for your key, Arali. Oh, this. She holds the key aloft in her hand. She looks inside. Oh, it's, it's for the other side. She slides the key into position, tries turning it. Maybe, um, <clears throat> turning the key clockwise, a small click and the base of the inside of the chalice separates into two pieces which slide apart. Arali withdraws the key. <clears throat> platform rises from below, bringing its treasure all the way to the lip of the chalice. On the platform sits a ceramic teapot, handle opposite spout. The teapot is white, painted with blue and green glaze, in the shape of a man with a long beard and hair, standing arms outward as if offering himself to the viewer. On the opposing side, the same scene is depicted from behind. Also atop the platform, and just to the side of the teapot, are four simple ceramic teacups, all white, but adorned with colorful snakes painted on the sides. One blue, one red, one green, and one golden. Arali turns to you. The hell is this? This doesn't seem like much of a treasure. It's another puzzle. Is it a puzzle? Ah, uh, maybe. Usually, in our experience, there's some instructions on how to solve it, though. 
Ugh, this I... is getting old. I don't want there to be more puzzles. Thought Welcome we were done. to the adventuring life. <laughs> What's this back here? Now notice, after the harrowing fight, that there seems to be... It looks as if something dug into this space from the outside, creating an enormous hole in the chamber's wall. Stark stone breaches this hollowed space and continues on mm. to the deep. Well, when it comes to inspecting holes, especially stone mm. ones, I know Alik's the man for that job. <laughs> That's right. Um, what's the history of this hole? Uh, you can like it was crafted? use your stone sense to try to I figure it out. I use my stone sense. Plus, it's a double history and proficiency. It's history. Yeah, I think it's history. Yeah, so 20. Uh, this doesn't look man-made, humanoid-made in any sense. It looks I like burrowed. I think a snake made this. Not a person. Maybe a human face snake, but that's not that's not the same. Ali, you know snakes don't have hands, right? Well he could have used his mouth or just like rubbed up against it really hard and burrowed in there. Are there snakes that burrow? I feel like there must be. Oh There's yeah. A lot of snakes that burrow. <laughs> I don't know of any that punch through stone. I mean, you any that are gigantic most snakes don't <laughs> actually faces. burrow. They just travel through existing holes that were created by other things, but fair enough. I know there's like a spider that buries itself. Maybe there's a snake that buries itself. Yeah, I'm well familiar with the wolf speeder. Wolf spider. Wolf speeder. Speeder. Shut up. I'm still, feeling, I'm still feeling rough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of poison damage. What's um? Think this teapot sells for anything at least? It just seems like a normal teapot. I I don't I don't think this is the treasure. I don't think anybody. And I think it would be this. So I'm just gonna take it. <laughs> I think if we give up now, we're gonna miss out on some cool stuff, potentially. So. Did, yeah. did anyone check to see if there's anything in the teapot? Nobody cares about no. the tea set. No one cares. It's mine. <laughs> um, well, now I want it. <laughs> <laughs> A Raleigh grabs the teapot by its handle, unless you already have chance. Uh, I would, I mean, I'm going to be like leading leading towards it. I would like to. All right. A Raleigh quickly grabs the teapot by the can handle. Can I grab her hand? Like her you can wrist. grab her hand. Yeah. I'd like to grab her wrist and just give her like a don't. Don't. What? What's wrong? This is the treasure, right? We are not certain yet. This well, is let's just open it. I just want to look inside. Hold, hold now. Chance. Don't be in such a rush. It's a pretty. She, I, she gives lost. you the devil's eyes <laughs> as you grab her wrist, and she's like, "You should let go." I want to do it right back and be like, "No." This is my tea set. Guys. <laughs> Another fight immediately after the she big fight. Grabs, where we're on our she grabs your arm. <laughs> I need you to make. Oh, no. She grabs your arm. What's your AC? Oh, fuck. It's a 12. <laughs> oh, no. She's actually going to hit me well. <laughs> Oh god, she crit you. Oh um, no! <laughs> we should use Zone of Truth. No. This, this chance, is just him being an asshole. Chance is deserving <laughs> this one. I just want the tea set. Nobody Dude, wants we it. don't know anything about the tea set. No That's one gets the key. Point. That's why I want it. It's mysterious. She's, she's trying to open it, Chance. Jesus Christ. As she grabs your hand... You feel poof, your muscles tighten, and a jolt of electricity shoots through you. Um, you take 16 points of 
electricity damage. <laughs> uh, Lightning so damage. I, hold on. Now, as she does that, like that's gonna that's gonna cause me to to react. I'm gonna. Well, you aren't prepared for this, but you can do no. something in retaliation. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to. Oh dear no, God! I don't. I didn't mean. To you sure? That chain events. Don't have to. I do. <laughs> Ali has to. Helm demands I, it. I guess. Helm demands it. All right, I'm gonna. Son of a bitch, I dropped hold person to take zone of truth. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate <laughs> cosmic karma. It really is. All right. Um, all right, then I'm just going to yell at her and be like, what are you doing? Stop that right now. March over there. Do, do you release her chance? She's got her hand Direct on your her wrist, her and hand. she's just staring directly yeah, I, I, into I you. like that question, Tim. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> type of electricity, is it? Because if it's direct current, I can't let go. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you get the shock, and it abates, but you feel I'm quite let, bad. I'm going to let go immediately. Like, what the fuck? I didn't expect that. Thank you. I inspect the teapot now. <sighs> Venturous. She opens the teapot, looks inside, turns it upside down and shakes it, puts the lid back on, shrugs. Well, I'm glad that we went through, <laughs> through that it, interaction for that. Jeez, some of us need to learn to be mature in this group. Can I take a look at the teapot and see if I recognize any of the imagery on it or... Sure. Anything Roll about where it might be from? History. It's a 17. There are many legends of great wise men who often present themselves with arm, arms open towards... Uh, Whoever might seek wisdom from them. Your knowledge is a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know something about this teapot, but I also feel like I know less about this teapot than I did a second ago. Uh, I don't know. It seems like an invitation to learn about whatever this place holds. So it could be a good sign, even if it's not the actual treasure that you're looking for. <sighs> this is terribly disappointing anyone got any tea yeah, maybe we could salt We're gonna... next time would we like to brew some tea that's what i'm thinking but i think i think narada would prefer that we proceed next next time uh, it is it yeah. is late I'm gonna, let's Sorry. think about We've what to do and reconvene in child. one week's <laughs> time for more Tales from <laughs> Tuatha. Uh, thank Thanks, you to guys. all the participants. Love you guys so much. This has been great. I think this was a great conclusion. Um, thank you to the viewers, however many there were. It looks like there were four left. Uh, we had like nine or 13 or something at some point, which is cool. Remember to follow, check out the links below for Discord and my Twitter and all that stuff. And the YouTube where all the past episodes are available as well. Um, we're on to session 43. Next time, we'll see you next week for more Tales from Tawatha. Bye. 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 Bye.